Hey, and welcome back to episode 57 of the Cellar Cast. Today is another special episode because I am being joined by a guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, happy to be on. My name is Prox, or Prox is Frisky, if you want to find me on YouTube, since I haven't had the name Prox yet. Anyway, I uh, make films on stuff I care about, like video games, maybe films, music here and there. Don't know. Writing a novel. I've worked with Mama Max and uh, Nexpo for quite a few years now on various projects. Um, still pretty much getting started with YouTube stuff. Like, I've been on YouTube since like 2010, but I've only really been taking it seriously since about 2020. I have very few uploads and I'm struggling to have a consistent workflow still right now for my ne my next upload. So, uh, yes, that's that's who I am. It's actually, we, I think we actually started around the same time. I also basically started in 20, 2020. Like late 2020. When it when uh when about did you start posting videos? Really? Uh, <laughs> back in 2010, I had a really really bad um, computer, and I was very young and dumb. So what I did was I found like free, uh, like hypercam, unregistered hypercam two type <laughs> shit, and then I created uh flash game walkthroughs because flash games was about the only <laughs> thing I could play because I didn't have money. And my computer couldn't run the likes of even like Half Life Two. It was like that bad. Mm -hmm. So, but like what one day I like, what basically got me into creating, to be honest, like in 2010 was these 2009 Gmod animations um, from Kitty 0706, like um, Elliot goes to school and uh, moments with heavy stuff like that. And it was like, dude, I want to make my own stuff. It's gonna be real epic, dude. It's gonna be cool. I want to <laughs> make Gmod and like. Then I made these really bad Gmon animations too. Like I basically have over a hundred <laughs> privated videos that I might talk <laughs> about at some point. But anyway, what I'm doing now is very concise, um, sort of like documentaries, or I like to call them films because they are their own like big project that I put a lot of work into. Um, a lot of analysis going on. Like my next video is about the Matrix, particularly Enter the Matrix. Um, which is like this old 2003 game that ties in with the second Matrix movie and yeah it's I don't know I have, I have a lot of I have a big connection to it because I've like grew up playing it and it's sort of a bit of a controversial game in the sense of like wow what the hell happens in it and wow the gameplay sucks <laughs> and a lot of other things anyway I, I, enough about me what what do, what do I you I make videos about cum <laughs> and sperm <laughs> And bestiality. <laughs> I was gonna. I was None gonna of these ask. things are false, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make uh, uh, like a meme of like, give me your elevator pitch, but that was perfect. I can encapsulate <laughs> your channel instantly. That's that's. I've actually kind. Of, I, I've kind of struggled to like summarize my my channel to people because like I'll meet people and I'll be like, I have a YouTube channel. Well, right. they'll have to ask first because I don't like talking about it. Yeah, they have right. to like ask me what I do. I feel so embarrassed talking to like like teachers and stuff from my old high school, and they're like, "So what are you? Up, what, what school are you going to?" And I'm like, "Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, because like when I have to like about less than a month ago or about a month ago, I kind of, I was doing work with Glink, this other YouTuber, and he introduced me to a lot of these business people, um, <laughs> particularly. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know how to explain it other than like, basically a lot of them were very confrontational and I haven't really worked on my elevator pitch yet for my channel. And it sounds kind of like silly and goofy at the same time that anybody would want to cover like little, little video games. Why do video games matter? And, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for that. Like, I didn't have, like, the best childhood growing up, and, like, one of the escapes that I had was video games, and I'm sure millions of children from the early 2000s can, um, you know, attest to that as well. You know, bad households and all that. But anyway, I'm not trying to make it all depresso, but anyway, video games kind of matter, you know? Like, they're mm -hmm. their own little interactive entertainment bubble like sort of more deep than films and other stuff sometimes 
uh, could provide a whole different world for people. Anyway, anyway, yeah, I love video games. Yeah, I just really like cum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, epic. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, it makes yeah. people, dude. Like, I'm, that's my elevator. Pitch. We're around like, because of. God. I'm like, they're like, so what's your channel about? I'm like, you know, balls. You'll never guess what's inside. <laughs> P. <laughs> Common misconception. <laughs> what if I told you there was a way to get the cum out of the balls? <laughs> and P at the same time. Yeah, I'm actually quoting from the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a Matrix quote. Morpheus, like, what if I told you <laughs> there was a way to get the cum out of the balls? No way. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, usually the fucking the way that I I try to kind of explain my channel is I I kind of generalize it and say I make short documentaries on like, um. Gaming curiosities. That's the best way that I can surmise it. Is that it's like... You know... Because if you say, like, I make gaming videos, that's so broad. It's like, what, a less Let's Plays? Or right, yeah. Like, something like that. Or it's like, no, it's like... I'm more interested in, like, just telling... Like, finding a story on something that I think is interesting. And then explaining what I find interesting about it. It's like imparting... Let's see, like when I do re like I love doing research, and uh, so I'll find something interesting, and then I love going down rabbit holes and just spending like hours reading about something, or just find like finding like oh my god I can't believe there's all this all this stuff here, <laughs> this is crazy, because um, there's so many things like that, uh, and then like while i'm doing that i'm experiencing whatever emotions of like bewilderment or laughing or just something like that or just be really in, you know awe inspired or something like that and when i make a, a video i guess my goal is to kind of like impart that emotion on the viewer and it comes out in the form of like a little documentary thing or they come, yeah, I guess, like, it, it. that's the closest thing I could describe it as, as a documentary. A deep dive. <laughs> Excuse me. No, yeah, uh, I can so. relate as well. Um, deep dives and stuff. It definitely is more so, like, because I watch other um, sort of, like, reviewers or commentary people, and I, I feel as if there's, like, something missing there. Like, they're decent videos, but I feel like there's a mm -hmm. lot, there's, like, more that can be done to i suppose m like have the audience or the viewer ex have a very interesting or like intense experience um like for yeah. example when i cover stuff that related to like afraid of monsters is probably one mm -hmm. my other you know my other video um i definitely try to put the viewer into that same sort of atmosphere like that really creepy foreboding setting that you just don't know what's going to be around the corner you know and like stuff like that you know like it's mm -hmm. a horror game and yeah pretty much yeah deep dive analysis uh documentary I, I definitely get where you're coming from and it's sort of hard to explain that like because people just want it in like such a bite-sized like little thing and it's like well uh -huh. i don't do that like i like <laughs> making yeah, bigger it's, stuff it's and tough. diving deeper than the others right so yeah in the in the publishing world they have what's called well i mean you're writing well i mean you're writing a book how much do you know about publishing stuff i <laughs> we're both we're both book writers <laughs> oh okay so you write you books okay so did, did i meant did i might not mention that before i don't think you have to me i didn't know oh, you're a writer weird interesting yeah um no i i i'm writing a novel currently i've been writing real intensively since high school basically okay sweet um what do you write about like what's your genre of choice usually um it so when i was in high school i wrote this series of like three books that was kind of like i guess i'd call it like a 
again, I always struggle to like describe what it was like my channel. <laughs> um, it was, I guess, in broad terms, like kind of like a uh, and it like a mm, like a fantasy action series. Fantasy isn't quite, you know, you know, like Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> Yeah, I can, I'm sure you I can sort of see that. It's, it's like that kind. Of, I think I think it, that gets called like dark fantasy or whatever or something like that. That's probably I, the, when I say fantasy. I, I'm not I'm not big into high fantasy like uh, Tolkien type stuff, but um, something like uh, a, yeah, Full Metal Alchemist type. That's the closest thing I could I could describe it to. Like it it it, it, it took place in a world that is pretty similar to earth but within like around like the 18 like an alternate 1800s i guess uh and it, it started off as like a cowboy story and then it got weird and uh i would write like a chapter every week not terribly long mind you but i'd write like a little chapter every week to like keep it going and keep myself writing and then i ended up with like three books or like two and three quarters books I graduated before I uh, finished the last one, and then I was like, I should, before I finish the third book, I should maybe go back and, like, edit the first one, because it was something I thought I might be able to publish, and then I remember rereading the first one, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> this is gonna take so much work, because <laughs> it was, like, so much earlier on in, like, my writing and I was like, oh, f fuck, I, uh, I I, can't put this out. I would never be able to show this. I have to fix this. Um, it wasn't, I don't think it was like all bad, but it was like, just I, just, just the, the basic writing, I feel like could be improved so much. So I tried for like half a year to a year to like f make a second draft and it just sucked the life out of me. And I was like, why don't I just start a new book? but like have a plan because I had no plan when I started. I was just writing because I enjoyed it. So I was like, why, why don't I like write an actual outline <laughs> of my book and I'll have like a basic idea of what I, you know, what it to be about. And, and so I, I did all that. I wrote like the full outline, which took me, it wasn't that didn't take that long. Excuse me. Just smacked my pop filter. And, uh, for the last year-ish, I've been writing it. Uh, there was a period at the start of 2019 where I wasn't writing very consistently for a bunch of different reasons, but I'm kind of back. Recently, I've been doing it. I, I've been getting back to it and, and actually like putting some substantial work into it. Oh, I should... You've asked me what genre I was talking about. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you're good. Um... Uh, it's basically like a, um, it's like a period piece vampire book. It okay. takes place in, in, in Transylvania. It's like ripping off Dracula, but, um, uh, with other stuff. I like writing action, so it has that. And... Yeah, I also write, actually, weirdly enough, I'm not a huge fan of, like, horror stuff. Like, I, I don't, I don't, like, shun horror as a genre or anything. It's just never, like, something I was super duper into. Um, but all of the short stories I write, because I, I also like writing short stories, all of my short stories are, like, horror shorts for some reason. Which, like, I didn't plan, it's just... I have an idea for like a short horror thing and it comes out here yeah, I have an idea and it, and it for like a, a short story and it, it always comes out as like a horror story which I think is curious yeah so that's interesting so like dark fantasy I sort of have yeah. for my main novel um, which it's hilarious I haven't even really I've gotten like a small little outline for it but I've only like brainstormed in my head with it for about like three years there's like so many things I need to like write out but anyway yeah. I sort of relate in that it's dark fantasy but more so towards the element of 
or not the element, but more so the genre of cyberpunk. So something along the mm. lines of Neuromancer or oh, Johnny shit. Mnemonic or, mm -hmm. you know, just or uh, Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. And the main premise is ba it's basically like a it's pretty much like a revenge story. However, it has like an incredible amount of commentary dealing with um, classism and a lot of other like politics and stuff like it's not getting like super political in your face it's more so very underlying themes underneath a lot of like really cool action and stuff but it's basically in its very core a revenge story with this uh, woman named Sarah who's about like who's pretty much an unknown age it looks like she's about in her 40s though and she wants to get her son back and she basically has placed the blame on the main company that owns like this ginormous city named Ketsu and the company's like name is Ketsuku right now. Ket Ketsu? Ketsuku, yeah. And the um Ketsu means like Ketsu means butt in Japanese. Oh, I didn't know that. That's funny. Yeah, it literally means butt. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> I don't know Japanese, That's and it's so just funny. kind of a insert. Like I don't know, like because the names <laughs> are from like this game I played. I kind of like that's sort of like non-canon stuff, but yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty funny. But anyway, you know, it's a revenge story, and it's uh, I don't know, very graphic, <laughs> and has yeah. horror elements in it. Like people who see Sarah, like. Sarah's like the, was this normal woman but then underwent this like accident like she was like in this explosion accident or whatever that basically should have killed her but for some reason this like guy just like takes her remains and like experiments with her and basically reconstructs her with like this pretty cutting edge technology from Ketsuku so it's, it's suspected that he's a Ketsuku scientist who like might have wanted revenge against Ketsuku so he like stole parts like cutting edge parts from them and rebuilt her and she has her memory sort of but anyway she's like this killing machine now and when people hear of her they either don't know who she is or pe they freak out and like immediately leave or something because mm -hmm. she has like this like sort of like a I don't know like a big inspirations like Ghost in the Shell like Motoko has like a lot of abilities like yeah. um thermoptic camouflage and stuff like she has that and like thermal vision and shit like anyway there's a lot of details i need to like work out but ultimately big revenge story with a lot of action she's like gets more and more ruthless throughout the story and cares less and less about the lives she's taking because it's all for like her son that you mm. know spec like there's a lot of speculation on whether her son even exists like, there's no even mm -hmm. proof that he even exists, so it's, like, this whole thing of, is she trying to get her son back, or is she programmed to just destroy the company? Um, yeah. Oh, interesting. Anyway, don't okay. want to ramble too much about it. No, but, fine. Uh, How long have you been writing? I've been thinking about it for, like, three years, but as far as, like, writing it and stuff, I haven't really wrote well, much. Well, just, like, in, in, in general. Oh, writing. Yeah. Um, I suppose, like, it's weird. In high school... I sort of hated writing for a long time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get more into engineering. But the more I got into engineering, ironically, the more I started <laughs> appreciating writing as like an outlet for like creative just about writing? anything. Yeah, like creative writing. I don't okay. like I mean I could write some pretty good goddamn essays on like something like World War Two, like solid yeah, sure. like college level shit. Um, get like hundreds on it and stuff. That's pretty much what I did in my college writing class got hundreds on big essays all the time because it just I don't know it yeah. came naturally but it's not something I particularly like to do I, I definitely liked more of the creative writing <laughs> and I for a very long time yeah. have been drawing as well uh, and oh. it's it's I have like a bunch of original characters that was based basically on like anime and shit and then I incorporated them into my novel as important characters so ultimately my <laughs> novel if I were to make, um, get a film, like, funded or whatever, it would probably be with, like, Studio Trigger or somebody who could, like, draw out. That's, yeah, that's your dream? <laughs> yeah, like, a really rough, yeah. sketchy type of style. I don't need it to be, like, super, in my opinion, like, a lot of animes today look very, uh, sterile in, like, the same yeah. thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's one I, of the reasons yeah. I've, I've kind of, I don't know, fallen off of a lot of anime. Yeah, and I guess. I'm not saying yeah. they're bad, like, story-wise. No, it's yeah. just, like, I don't know. There's so much more, um, I guess, personality that can be had out of just not making them so sterile and bland and, oh, you got to conform to anatomy. Like, it's the Bible or some shit. Like, I don't believe that at all. Well, there's a lot of anime that... Specifically women who do not conform to a, a human anatomy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, okay, I can agree with that, but at the same time... I see what you mean, like like a similar like approach to anatomy and, and stuff like that. But Like, like uh, anime proportions. Right. Is that what you mean? And, like, what I mean by that is, like, some anime are super recognizable because of its interesting art style and maybe not so yeah. conformed um like anatomy and stuff like that i was gonna make a joke that like if you've ever been to the gym you're gonna see no. chicks or maybe even <laughs> dudes who basically challenge the notion of like oh you really think anime proportions aren't realistic well look at this person <laughs> And it's, like, yeah. a dude with, like, tiny legs and, like, giant chest or, like, a chick with, like, a giant ass and, like, barely any torso. But anyway, it, you can definitely, there, there are examples. But anyway, oh, yeah, sure. like, Eon Flux, like, I know that's oh, yeah. not really, like, I, I sort of, I don't know if that's an anime. I think it was written by someone not in Japan, but that... It's just animation, whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, Eon Flux, that, um animation like it, it's so recognizable because of its um really really interesting art style i, I mean i don't i'm not particularly like a giant fan of it but because it looks yeah. so unique it's like it's uh, it's undeniably eon flux um yeah yeah was was it based was that based on a manga or was that like anime original or it's like an original anime eon flux i believe was written by like a i don't think it was a japanese dude i'm pretty sure it was like a uh I'm not sure. Um, you'd have to, yeah, look that up. Uh, looks like it was just an original. <laughs> looks like it wasn't based on anything. Excuse me. Uh, there was a live action movie. Yeah, Holy no, I think shit. it apparently sucked. Somewhere. That looks terrible. Yeah. Anyway, um, I. Yeah, right. Um. Oh yeah, I mean. Was it done in? Was that made in in Japan or in America? I'm curious, or or somewhere else outside of Japan. I'm almost positive it was not made in Japan. I think it was made by some guy um, in like either South America or maybe Europe. I don't know. Does call it uh, an American? <laughs> Wikipedia call it, describes it as an American avant-garde science fiction adventure animated oh, television American. series. Oh, American. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. Um, development. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't see anything about where it was animated, but yeah, because the um, yeah, uh, that's like when you say that, my first thought goes to I it's probably overplayed examples, but I love JoJo's. <laughs> I've never seen JoJo, but I know like all the memes yeah. of like JoJo and like the fans and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone goes through that phase. <laughs> I was like that once, but um, for me, it was Bleach. I don't know if you know that anime. Oh, <laughs> you're talking to the number one Bleach defender. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No way. Are yeah, you kidding Bleach me? That's was the so one. hilarious. Bleach was like when I was. It was like a lit little bit um let's see when i was getting into anime it was around sixth grade the th the big thing at the time was um sword art on sword art online so it was like post like the big hype for bleach i wasn't like super into like anime where i knew like what was current and what had like started airing when and i didn't have like much orientation but i knew about like the Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, Trifecta, the big three of the sh of Shonen uh, for like ten years, and so in like the seventh grade or whatever, I'm like, I'm curious about one of those series, and I and I'm like, fuck, it's such a big time investment. Which one, which one interests me? 
and I picked Bleach because I liked the art style the most. There you go. Because yeah. in my opinion, Tite Kubo, or Tite Kubo, however you say his name. I think he it's has Tite. A, yeah, Tite Kubo. It's weird. He has a very definitive art style. Like when you see his art, you know it's like either Bleach or um, Burn the Witch, I think is the new one he's doing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah, that's really interesting because like all of my characters, like in my um novel so far like i have like over 20 like original characters a bunch of different mm -hmm. um personalities looks whatever they all originated in the bleach universe because what i did <laughs> back then was i made a lot of like fan fiction not like porn but more so like <laughs> i wasn't i didn't assume right porn. but that, that's now you sound the, now i'm like Oh my god, it was totally porn because he brought it up. No, but <laughs> when people like hear though, fan like, fiction, never, they hear. I would never. <laughs> I know you wouldn't, but a lot of people <laughs> hear fan fiction. And they're like, "Oh, <laughs> it's a ship between this guy and this guy. I want Ichigo so Reggie funny. to make out." No, that's not what I'm talking about. But more so, like <laughs> alternative things with the yeah. plot for Bleach, because Bleach is the biggest like what could have been I've ever oh, seen god. in my life because. Ble there's so many points where I'm like, fuck, if you just had this, it would make the story so much better. I know, so much filler, so much exposition, and the Did, Thousand Year yeah. Blood War is so ridiculous. Like, it's so absurd. Like, it has the it's, most overpowered yeah, characters in anime I've ever seen. I know. It's so... I have such weird feelings about the Blood War, because I, I, I love so many parts of it, but there's a lot of parts where I'm like that could have been better or there's like weird things with the blood war where it's like treating the symptoms of the series overall writing problems in like the last leg of the series and it's like it's like when Kamamura gets his big thing and I'm like that's cool I don't know if it makes up for like 500 issues of basically being like a background character but okay <laughs> right <laughs> and like the th the funny thing is I know an insane amount about Bleach. I haven't read any of the manga unfortunately, but I've watched pretty much the series oh. multiple times and I don't so that means that I don't know like a whole lot about the Thousand Year Blood War, but Oh, I thought I, okay, yeah. I do know how ridiculous it gets. Like there's literally it's a wild. guy who can think of anything and it will yeah. happen. Yeah, that How arc is fucking that? great. That arc is fucking, that fight is so great because he fight. Dude, you have, to, I'm going to spoil. Okay. I don't know if I'm, uh, fuck. Because <sighs> the anime is coming out and like I know there's some people who are excited for it. Fuck, I don't even want to spoil it for you. But no, I fucking love that. That fight is so good. And like the thing that like precedes it, like the character who fights that guy immediately before has this like one of the best segments of like like most interesting parts of the series ever happens to him or uh, or, or or him or the, the them or not being specific or <laughs> not spoil but like dude it's so good and then it's there's parts it's like ah uh, why did you forget about this thing <laughs> yeah it's, uh, yeah i like it overall but it's it's really crazy in a fun way. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'll take your word for it. I'm gonna watch. I'm, I'm like, I'm trying yeah. to catch up again because, but I'm like stuck in the uh, like the Zanpakuto meme. But why are arc. you even watching the? I know, floor? I know, I know. Why even do that? It's not even ca actually. <laughs> actually, the Zanpakuto one might be a little bit. There is one thing in the Zanpakuto arc. <laughs> that becomes canon later on in the blood war and like it's not like you have to know like you it's not like you would have to have watched it but it's like it the, when it shows up in the blood war i don't know if you know what i'm talking about but well, when it Murder shows Masa, up does he show up or no is he just no no i don't okay no that's that's not it but it's like when it shows up it's like it could have when it shows up in the blood war that could have been its introduction and it would have worked fine. Or it could be like, oh, that's coming back if you already watched the Zanpakuto arc. The one, literally, when I say one thing, I mean literally one thing. <laughs> LOL. You'll 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 know what it is, because it's pretty it's pretty obvious. Um But like, yeah, it's uh 
Yeah. So, did you ever read the manga or just watch the anime? I've only watched the anime. I haven't read the manga, uh, which okay. is probably going to change within the next few years. I'm probably am going to read through all of it. I um, the wait, yeah. Yeah, and like the thing is like um yeah, the Zonfuck so stuff's not canon, especially the I hate I think the Bound arc is like the worst filler of That's all time. That's the fucking worst. That is literally the worst one like ever. It never comes back like a single time. It's Nothing. completely pointless. No, it comes back in a filler scene in like a <laughs> Don't you know what I'm talking about? It's the vil- it's what is it? I forget what even the context is, but it's way later on Ichigo is getting like visions of past like boss characters he's fought and it's like Zoraki, Byakuya and then the guy from the Bount arc shows up for like oh, five God. seconds to be like remember me and he's like I do remember you character who totally existed <laughs> <laughs> and then they just move on I'm pretty sure they just took something from one of the other characters scenes or like whatever they said and they were just like oh we'll just give it to the Bount guy <laughs> they just like cut it up yeah I just yeah. Like oh, and then the so random weird. doll characters also reoccur in more filler bits to, like, justify them showing up. Oh, God. Remember yeah. the little dolls? Yeah. yeah, um, I forgot their goddamn name, the, like, the line. They don't the matter. The, yeah, they were from, basically, technically, they're sort of from the Bount arc, like, their physical forms, I think. Yeah. They were in that one? Yeah. They were in there, and then they get, they were, like, they had, like, the physical forms, and then they got put into the dolls... And then, whatever, I guess that's... I never finished the Bount Dark. I, I tried to watch, like, half of it, and then I just skipped straight past to where the actual... It starts, like, becoming non-filler again, because it was so bad. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's so sucks. boring. It's very boring, and I was just thinking to myself, like, I, I just kind of want to um, clarify this, but mm-hmm. it's kind of weird. Like, the way I did, like bleach fan fiction stuff i had like friends like where we basically like discussed it and stuff and like back then we like like fucking like role played and shit um so we like <laughs> nice. played as our characters and all that but anyway we took basically the best parts of the filler and made it sort of like quote unquote canon oh, in our homebrew okay. universe like the zompok toes we wrote zompok toes as well and they had physical forms and they could just easily yeah. change into their physical forms as like a human or whatever they are just to make it easier sort of like some soul eater shit if you've ever seen that yeah the oh, yeah, can soul eater. i have change. some of the manga yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah well there is it is a weird thing it shows up for like one scene in the soul society arc do you remember that where Renji is, up. like, taking a nap, and he wakes up, and, like, his Zanpakuto, like, the baboon or whatever. I think so. It, like, appears to him as, like, a like a vision, and it, like, says something to him, and it's literally the one time. I, I guess except for uh, Ichigo's um, Zangetsu talking to him. Right. It's pretty much it. It's, like, the only other time that a character convenes with their sword. Which, like, it's actually, like, a decent idea for, like, a storyline to, like, expand on that. Because it's, like, oh, it's going to be kind of interesting. Uh, but I never... So the way that I read Bleach was that I would just, like... I made it up through, like... Oh, I specifically remember where I dropped the anime. It was in the Hueco Mundo arc specifically the fight where Uryu is fighting that moth girl. Right. Yeah, that the, was boring. What is her name? Primarone Espada? Yeah, I remember that specifically. And then uh, a few years later when I was in high school, I was like, I want to finish Bleach, but I don't want to be bored. So I just read the manga. And honestly, I think the manga is kind of a better experience. Probably. <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um... I know there's like like a very uh, there's that thing like oh the manga is better, and it's like you know it it I think that like depends on the on the series uh, like um, there's definitely adaptations that are bad but the an the anime for Bleach has like obviously it's got color and motion and like music <laughs> the music's honestly probably the best part you know the composer for the Bleach anime soundtrack was the guy who did the music for evangelion oh wow okay yeah that's why it's good it's it's really like memorable it makes a lot of sense 
Um, so, but I don't know. The manga has much better pacing, sort of. It is better. Ugh, it's better than the anime. The pacing gets bad, especially uh, during the whole Aran Car arc thing. Because he was, like, deliberately told by his editors to just extend it. So there's just all this boring, like, why does this have to be, like, a five-chapter fight? Like, why <laughs> yeah, do we have to spend so that, much time on this? Right. Yeah. And instead of that, man, I just... it's What pisses me off the, the most about Bleach probably is that, at least to me, Ichigo is, like, an insanely boring character... And pretty much every character other yeah. than him has like some interesting thing where I'm like, what? Is, so what? What is? What's it about them? Like, I want to know more about Rukia. Yeah. I want to know more about Kampachi. I want to know more, especially oh, about yeah. Udahara. But the, he like they cuck us out of knowing more about Udahara, like for the whole fucking series. It seems <laughs> for most of it. Yeah, yeah. except the, the most flashback in- arc and the, yeah. uh, and some parts of the Blood War. But yeah. Uh, I think one of the problems so like it's I think that is also like just a symptom of one of Kubo's writing problems where I think he literally said in an interview that when he gets writer's block he just adds characters to the story. Wow. <laughs> Which like oh that makes a lot of sense. Um so like there's so many characters in Bleach and it isn't like like there's a lot like like JoJo's for instance, just use it as a frame pointer, which I know you haven't seen. But in the way that JoJo's works is that like there are like tons and tons of characters, but most of them are like one-offs. Most of them are like they show up for their one fight. It's basically like a like a monster of the week format. They have like one fight that's pretty interesting. They're, it's like a quick sh- like shotgun of a character, and then the fight's over and we move on. And they very rarely hang around. In Bleach, it's like well they're here they exist uh and so like ichigo kind of ends up getting like drowned out in his own story so like it's just like uh like you want to give ideally like your most development to your main because ichigo also is not like a static character really like like uh a common example for like a static character would be like goku like goku doesn't really change in his story but like as the protagonist, he changes other characters. Ichigo, like, actually develops. Like, that was the intent for him to develop over the course of the story. And, like, he does, but there's so much other shit going on that it kind of just gets, like, lost in the sauce. Yeah. And it, it's... There's so many other, like, really cool characters, like Urahara, or, like, Yoruichi, or, like, I don't know, um... Fucking, like, half the RN car. Or, sorry, Espada. <laughs> like I mean, yeah, like yeah. there's a stupid amount of um detail that goes into like the the characters that do stick around and it's something I definitely respect about Bleach, but sometimes the execution yeah. is just so poor. Like there's so many like nuances to each faction. Like for fuck's yeah. sake, there's Soul Reapers, there's Rukon District people, there's Visards, there's Quincy's then there's like a weird mix of like like Ichigo is like yeah. pretty much all of them, which is like such yeah. an interesting coincidence. Maybe that's why he arguably develops insanely fast, and it seems like complete bullshit sometimes. When like, because <laughs> I feel like him beating Kenpachi was complete bullshit, knowing how like yeah. insanely well it powerful okay Kenpachi okay is. It's kind of BS at the time. It. Kind it gets retconned, not really retconned. It gets like an explanation, not like a direct explanation, but you can infer it, and it happens in the blood arc. Sorry, the blood war arc, and it's actually I think really interesting for Kenpachi, like why he lost that fight, but that context literally comes like five hundred chapters later. <laughs> That's hilarious. And like, t- like, t- like, what what would that have been? Like thirteen years or something like that. Like thirteen years later, you get the context for like why he lost that fight, and it's really interesting if you're reading it in like one shot. But I can like, yeah, if it, if it's like you, you just spend like most of the series being like, why did he lose that fight if he's so fucking strong? Yeah, Kimpachi is arguably like 
probably one of the biggest threats in the Soul Society. Like, there's no way you can just yeah. simply defeat Kenpachi. Like, that's... I, I, I know how bullshit he gets later on. Like, I there's oh, a lot yeah. I know about the Blood War as well. Like, they literally have a list of people. Like, oh, yeah, the yeah. The, the Stern Raiders have Special a list. war potentials. That's what yes, it's called. I remember a shocking amount of this for having read this when I was a sophomore. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. like the people on that list were Urahara, Ichigo, Kenpachi. Um, I don't even think Yamamoto is on that list. No, Yam Yamamoto was on there. Oh, and then the fifth one, I don't remember. I don't remember either. Byakuya? But, no, I don't think Byakuya. I would oh, think so. Oh, it's someone from Squad Zero, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is. I don't even see... Squad Zero? You want to talk about missed potential? Yeah, I don't even Squad know about Squad Zero. Zero. I've read about that a little bit, and I didn't even remember it. The Squad oh, Zero my exists. God. And there's the Soul Palace and the Soul King. Oh, like, what the I hell? I don't even want... Oh, my God. They do show up, and you're like, these guys are cool. And then... Fuck, they do not get used properly. And also, uh, the fucking yeah. Stern Ritter, too, and they have different fucking factions of the Stern Ritter. Like, yeah. there's, like, the lower levels and the high... I don't remember all the names. And then there's no, the ones yeah. who have their own letter designation that are... Like, all of them arguably have, yeah. like, insane power. Like, the zombie ones. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Insane. There's other, like, completely... The entire... Like, the one of the reasons the Blood War is fun is that it's just you're just seeing like really weird powers like i found it really refreshing after like the arankar arc because like by the end of that it just gets so like i feel like nause nauseous with just like how high the power level was and how it but it, it was in a way where it like wasn't interesting it was just like two guys throwing nukes at each other which guy heads the more nukes or <laughs> just is like not that interesting um who can get like the biggest power up right. immediately after that especially with like the full bringer arc it was like even when the powers are really strong at least they were strong in like interesting ways that wasn't just raw like destructive power like uh you remember like the villain from the full bring arc right like the or the guy for who's the villain for most of it which is uh, named Sukasa or something like that. What arc is that? Oh god. I That's the one after that he name. loses his powers. After Ichigo does? Yeah, after Ichigo loses his powers. I Canada. don't th I think that's the arc I remember the least. Like I think I'm I'm approaching the yeah. like, I'm gonna That's watch the that one Yeah. I actually like that arc for the most part cuz it felt like really refreshing cuz it was it was almost like a redo of like the start of the series like the first arc like agent of the shinigami where it's just like he's just in karakura town hanging out and then oh supernatural things happen and the, it was way more grounded and the villain in that has like a really strong power that basically lets him beat you with like one hit but it isn't like killing you it's just like making you not see him as a as a enemy basically <laughs> that's like how i can describe it without a, a lot of spoilers but that's kind of it's weird. like a, yeah it's actually like an interesting interesting ability like oh if he lands one blow on me i'm like i'm i'm like basically brainwashed uh that's weird <clears throat> uh, like, so it, yeah sorry like i, I yeah. jesus oh, i'm yeah. just going down the fucking meme <laughs> glitch rabbit hole but <laughs> I was also trying to... I think my brother is pretty knowledgeable about Bleach as well, and I rarely talk to him, but one of the last times I talked to him, like, lately, um, we talked about Bleach in particular, and he was trying to explain to someone who hasn't watched Bleach how <laughs> bullshit it can get at times. Like, Aizen as a character is just bullshit. <laughs> just complete it's bullshit. so dumb. Like, it's Aizen so shouldn't dumb. exist. Like, oh, yeah, in my homebrew universe, that, like, Bleach whatever universe that we've I've had yeah. for a long time, Aizen is nerfed, like, insanely, like, for obvious reasons. Yeah. And I've, I've heard that the Hogyoku is just one big-ass, like, I don't know, explanation. Like, yeah, just, yeah, Hogyoku is, is epic, and uh, it's just the key <laughs> to everything. Uh, it's basically... 
he doesn't die at the end of his arc, his big <laughs> arc. Yeah, of course he's he doesn't. still around in the Blood War. He's just kept in a prison cell like five billion miles underground, and they have to go talk to him because of the Blood War. And when they see him, he's gotten stronger. <sighs> He's just sitting in a chair. That's why there's a meme about chair Eisen. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sit sitting in a chair for like, I don't know how long, with nothing around him, like strapped up. <laughs> and he's gotten, and he's gotten stronger. stronger. Yeah, it's oh my God, silly. Dude. It's dumb. Eisen's such a dumb character. Like, if honestly, he could just, have been cool. Yeah, and he like, could have been cooler because of how there's bullshit like he is. Yeah, there's so much potential, and it's like the whole meme of, like, because of how bullshit he is, why does he need this huge Arankar army anyway? Why can't he just literally yeah. destroy everything by himself? Like, it's almost like a fat Well, he meme. wasn't at that point yet, until he had the whole... He wasn't, like, at that point of power yet, till he had, like, the Hogyoku in his, in his chesticle. I mean, uh, I, I, I... Yeah, but it's... Just, I don't know. His it's like, why does he alone. need all of this? Exactly. Like, I see, like, maybe having, like, just a lot of things at your disposal. But it, it is, like... Yeah, I like the idea of a villain who is just so strong that he doesn't, like, know... Like, that's kind of what they hint at. That the reason Ichigo is so strong is because Aizen has been, like intentionally trying to get him to be the strongest thing ever so that he can fight him because he's bored <laughs> which is like okay i can kind of i like the idea of a villain who's just so powerful that they don't know what to do and they just feel like alone which honestly is actually kind of kenpachi's thing sort of <laughs> a little bit yeah he's uh, like constantly trying to find like the strongest warrior and... yeah I mean, Kempaji's um, cool, though. Aizen is not. He's a goddamn lame beta. He's just... Haha. He's like the... Stere he is the stereotypical anime villain. Yeah. Like, when you think of that, you, you th like, haha, you've fallen for my trap. Like, it's exa <laughs> I've organized everything from the beginning. Like, he literally says, like, I've controlled your life since you were born. Or, like, he manipulated... He, uh, you find out later, he basically manipulated the circumstances of Ichigo's birth. So that <laughs> specifically Ichigo's parents oh were born God. together. Dude, which is like so fucking bullshit. insane. Well, I don't think he specifically manipulated it, but he did something that like inadvertently caused it. And he was like, let me kind of push this forward. It wasn't like that specific, but it's, it's, it's dumb. It's really silly. Like, ah, right. all according to Keikaku. <laughs> and maybe, yeah. So maybe I don't understand Aizen's power enough, but from what I can gather, Aizen could literally just show his sword to you and then trap you in like an infinite illusion hell and there's like nothing you can do <laughs> like how do you win against that <laughs> there's yeah basically <laughs> how did how does it what does it which matter is how also powerful like, ichigo gets if yeah he looks at your sword once and you're, that's the gone. other thing which i completely forgot about is like yeah his power is just if he shows you his sword one time, he can create any illusion affecting any sense forever. It never goes away. He can and it's like, why doesn't he use this time. on Ichigo? He never uses this on Ichigo. He could have used this at any point during like the big battle that he has with the Soul Society. He could have just flown up really high and gone, Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Look up here! Boom! I just shown his sword, and now everyone, no one fucking knows what's going on. So it it's like, it they have to. Kubo had to come up with like, uh, it's because he wants. That would be uh, he wants to he want he's handicapping himself. Yeah, that's the closest he can get. It's like ah. Remember how I said I was a bleach defender. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, I, I defend Bleach as well a little bit because I, I feel like the, the most interesting part to me is because how many characters, like, interact and stuff and, like, how there are some, like, pretty good moments. Like, I feel like, oh, yeah. in my opinion, my favorite arc will probably always be the Soul Society arc because yeah. it was just, like, pretty much the introduction of a lot of very key, like, Soul Reaper characters, like... 
Kempachi and Byakia and like a bunch of others and like I don't know it's uh, it's sort of like this weird thing I have too it might be a problem that I have in particular but <laughs> when the scope is small I feel like writing is like writer like the writing process that I I like I don't know how to explain it, but usually when an artist like has their first album or like an, an anime just starts, for some reason that's sort of my favorite point of yeah. um, either the anime, movie, whatever. Um, with some exceptions, like I obviously like um, Terminator Two like way more than one. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just definitively yeah. a much better film. But in the hey, case of take. Bleach, <laughs> the like first. 75 or like 80 episodes were just like i don't know pretty yeah. solid and interesting yeah it's well that's just like a general that's just like a kind of a general thing in in writing or yeah just like storytelling where like the 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 the, the, the this this just happens actually a lot with anime because as they go on, they feel the need to, like, raise the stakes super, super high. Right. Um, with, and it, it kind of gets, like, and you can, like, do that, but a lot of them fall prey to letting, it, it, it's kind of like hype, basically, where it's, like, you have to establish, you have to, like, build it up, like, Oh god, I'm gonna talk about JoJo's again. Fuck, because this is like the best thing that I that I could compare it to. No, what you're talking In about part four of JoJo's. The first like it takes place almost entirely in this one little town in Japan, and you spend basically the entire part, the entire arc, just like visiting different locations and meeting different characters and finding out their weird powers and like getting to know all these people, who. So, like, by, like, the midpoint of the show, when it had, had, like, no real, or of the, just part, the season, whatever you want to call it, in general, there was no real, like, overall direction. It was just, like, we're having goofy adventures that are sometimes super graphic. Um, and then, like, at the halfway point, there's, like, a character who gets introduced who's, like, a really interesting villain. Uh, and he's basically threatening the town or kind of this the, the sanctity of this town and you see all of these characters in like a lineup who you actually really like and fun, like they're very charming and and fun and you've had all these fun adventures with them and you're like oh i want to see them overcome this big threat to the town because i care about the town and the people in it rather than like well we spend this much time kind of building up the world a little bit and then the entire world is in jeopardy and it's like fuck the world's a big place yeah. <laughs> can i care about the whole world <laughs> it definitely um, yeah the, it's like it's sorry but like just to the it's generally kind of uh the summed up as like the more personal the stakes are the more important they feel right so like the stakes can be big but if they're relatively Im impersonal it really doesn't matter that much to the audience yeah i agree yeah, that's and there's also, yeah, yeah, there's a a thing that I really, I think I watched a um, either Two Clicks Philip or Three Kick Clicks Philip video about um, his thoughts about the Matrix, like films, all four of them. Mm -hmm. And he basically said that something that's <laughs> missing in two, three, and four that's in one. I, th I forgot there was a fourth one that came out. Yeah, I know. I talk about I that very, about that. very briefly in my video. Yeah. Because there's really not much to say about yeah. it, in my opinion. It's just a giant Sorry, waste of time. A little. <laughs> Sorry, guys, who like the fourth film. Uh, the first film of The Matrix, have you seen the movies? I've seen the first one. Okay, well, okay, Only. so it, it's, this is still relevant then. But the first movie has a very clear-cut, like, power dynamic. Like, yeah. for example, Normie, you have Normies who are still plugged up to the matrix you have yeah. the crew the like the hacker crew that are obviously way like well actually above normies there's cops like who are also plugged into the matrix like basically yeah, cops yeah. and then you have the crew that's unplugged and then you have like you know trinity and morpheus and then you have like agents 
and then you have Neo. Yeah. And Neo is not very Neo by the Neo by the end at least. Yeah, Neo by the end yeah. is like above the the agents. He's like on top. But yeah. before he was way below the agents. He was even way below the crew. Like he definitely yeah. had like very, very like zero fighting ability. He was kind of like he didn't want to get off that building. He was kind of like <laughs> you know. Yeah sort of a pussy you know like whatever like any other person who'd see what he's seen he's being like they'd be like hell no but yeah by the end he like pretty much tops agents and boom but then by the second third and fourth film like i i guess especially the second and third film he's just like naying every single yeah, agent like, that comes in his I way i can see that yeah and it like gets he has nowhere else boring. to go yeah like what who tops that right and then i don't really want to spoil it but it's sort of been spoiled to death in the past anyway, but, like, Agent Smith becomes mm -hmm. that, like, almighty villain, and it gets super ridiculous, yeah, not to spoil lame. too much. <laughs> and, yeah, just it's like, lame. You're like, uh, okay, yeah. No, yeah, that's, that's like... I mean, that's like a... I feel like... I, I can see that happening. I'm trying to think of other examples in my mind where that happens, but... That's like a very cl like Neo undergoes like a really classic like hero's journey story, where he starts off as like a total novice, and then by the end of the story he's like capable and powerful. Right. And the hero's journey is kind of for like like a one like a one shot. <laughs> like you don't really get to like do it again unless I don't know it was something completely different like like after the Matrix like he goes into like woodworking. <laughs> and it's like he's got to figure out how to carve wood and like he starts really bad or i don't know like like <laughs> um that's a pretty funny how argument. how would how would you have changed like the matrix sequels like what would you have done with it if you had to make like a like matrix as like a single movie is like great like you could leave it at that even with like the kind of eh, sort of sequel tease ending or whatever it's like ambiguous enough that you could like leave it on its own but like if you had to write if you're the Wachowskis <laughs> and you have to write a sequel, how would you have done it? Well, that's a pretty big loaded question, but I guess like to sense. make it pretty general, I definitely yeah. would have taken a lot more notes from the first Matrix and I would have particularly paid attention very closely to what pulled people into that movie in the first place mm -hmm. because the argument that I make in my video and what um, clicks, uh, two clicks Philip makes in his video is that like in the second movie, it's sort of like arguable that the Wachowski sort of forgot what pulled people into the movie. And then by the third, yeah. they're just completely lost. Like I feel like they, they have no <laughs> idea what people actually wanted to watch the movies for. And then by the fourth, there's like basically nothing, like nothing at all. Like it's just, it gets worse and worse as you progress through the four movies, particularly after the first one. But um, because what I argue in my video, um, you know, spoilers for my video coming out, LOL, is that... Oh, my God. Um, yeah, TLDR, the Wachowskis sort of forgot what pe pulled, you know, people into the first movie, and then the movie becomes, like, this really pretentious, self-important, <laughs> long-winded meme about how... Oh. About faith and yeah. about like i guess purpose they use the word purpose so many goddamn times like <laughs> it's, it gets really annoying and there's a lot of really long-winded conversations that are in the uh sequels that to the point where there are fans out there who have made complete fan edits where they cut <laughs> out an entire hour and a half of the two sequels and then combine Jesus. them Jesus, that's crazy yeah, and uh, Max and I have watched one of those fan films, and that fan film in particular even included some cutscenes from Enter the Matrix, because Enter the Matrix <laughs> has a, a complete hour of exclusive footage, like, shot on set, like, actual oh, film footage. like, just bonus, like, really? Okay, interesting. Which, that's if you crazy, really actually. like The Matrix, then great, but... Yeah, that's dope. If you really <laughs> don't like the sequels, then it's just more of, like, oh my god, and... I sort of get into that very deeply in my video um, that, you know, I wanted to finish this month. I don't think that's going to happen. But because <laughs> writer's block and, you know, yeah. discipline and all that. You should just add more characters. 
Yeah, yeah. Let me just add more characters to my little <laughs> prox add DM like universe. Add like a little like anti prox. <laughs> Who's gonna make it like a channel awesome <laughs> reviewer? And you like make. Oh God. You have to have like a story arc, <laughs> like your evil cyborg version. Hey guys, it's Prox here, and I review it so you don't. I have I watch it and review it so you don't have to. That's so. Wait, I feel like I was gonna say something about the Matrix. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I had like a, my brain went like a hundred miles in two different directions at the same time. Yeah, my brain does that all the time. <laughs> do you do you watch Red Letter Media? I watch no, I don't watch him. But I watched oh. a lot of um. God, what's his name? Fuck, um, nostalgia critic back then. Oh, okay. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say because they did like a retrospect discussion on the first Matrix movie, and they end up talking about the sequels in there, which I haven't seen, but they mention like the way they described it is because what you said was so funny about like the writers of the sequels had like no idea what people liked about the first one and they were like i feel like someone just you know was they didn't the wachowskis had no idea what to do and then someone went up to them and they were like people really like the philosophy lean into that more yeah and they were like uh fuck it philosophy exactly (laughs) and that's yeah yeah basically that hits a hammer on the head like i mean hammer on the head lol the nail on the head with the hammer (laughs) the Um, the hammer on the head yeah yeah um they definitely just went full-blown self-important philosophy meme when some of the philosophy is pretty interesting but it's sort of like this circle that doesn't really go anywhere um i mean it's an interesting circle it's it's way more interesting than like when people talk about politics because that's literally just (laughs) a circle that genuinely goes nowhere but mm-hmm. um, yes, there's a lot of um, metaphors and like biblical biblical type of like speak and all that in the sequels and yeah, again, people really didn't go to it for that. They went to it for the really cutting edge action and some of the philosophy that wasn't completely in your face, more so like yeah, I don't know. Like I feel like the Matrix for me is sort of like bleach in a way in the sense that Mm -hmm. it's the one of the biggest what could have been's of all time and it's something that i would definitely write on like why did neo want to find morpheus in the first place what drove him to question his reality and whether he was dreaming and what the matrix is right like what Mm -hmm. like it's sort of like a prequel i don't know if that'd be like incredibly interesting for some people but um I don't know. I, I like little stuff like that, like little um, nuggets of actually pretty, I don't know, maybe interesting little questions. Uh, like, there, for example, I don't know where this is, but it's like comics that somebody made about the Matrix and how, like, there was a bunch of these kids, right, about, like, five kids or something, and they go into this abandoned warehouse, and they're like, whoa, and then they see, like, this part of the warehouse where the gravity is, like, broken, like shit is just huh. like floating in oh. the corner and they start Literal like messing around the matrix. <laughs> yeah and they start messing around with the gravity in that corner and just having fun with it and i feel like something like that is just an excellent example of like um yeah the kinds the so many different angles that you can take that the wachowskis just didn't it's just like a peek into the end of that universe yeah, it's so grounded. Like, you can... Ah, dude. First movie is just... I think it's great. Like, I definitely still is a what yeah. could have been. Like, there's a lot I I sort of wish for in that movie, but it definitely is infinitely better than the sequels. Um, and I still think this is really funny. Like, my friend... Um, I have a friend who thinks that the second movie is his favorite. If okay. the whole first hour was removed... That's true. Oh, God. Right. And that movie's an hour and 40 minutes, so... Oh, God. The last 40 minutes of The Matrix 2 is my favorite Matrix movie. Yeah. It, it just it, it hit me funny. like a ton of bricks when he said that. I was just like, wow, you're That's so right. So funny. <laughs> oh, God. That was one of the most influential statements that I've heard in my life. Like, wow, that really <laughs> makes me think. 
Yeah, poetic. <laughs> Why do people hate this part? And then I realized. And in Enter the Matrix, I'm sort of halfway through my script, pretty much. And I'm pretty quickly realizing that after being very scrutinous, or like whatever the word is, like I'm scrutinizing the shit mm-hmm. out of this game. And yeah, after like having it under a, like over a magnifying glass, under a magnifying glass, whatever. I'm realizing how much filler is in the game, just like <laughs> the movies. <laughs> uh, is that because it's just like regular kind of game filler? Like games, games are just longer for whatever reason, right? Um, or is it just like eh. back then? <laughs> games were very short, and that includes Enter the Matrix. And this is how after. Is if I played through Enter the Matrix, it would only take me about, uh, I'd say like two hours per character really? so about four hours total characters? okay there's okay. two characters wow. there's ghost and niobe uh captain really? niobe those are both characters only in the second third films um really okay which have their how own how long lore. did you hmm? how long does it take on like the first playthrough just just because uh have, like, i'm gonna ball? say if you play on normal difficulty it would yeah. only probably if because i see a lot of game people like play it and they're very bad at the game no offense guys but um <laughs> it takes them only about three and a half hours per character so it's a very short game wow okay and it, and it has filler um yes because <laughs> even in the post office section which is the very first section of the game it's supposed to kind of be like a long tutorial which i respect it's a very easy part of the game that gets you into the, mm-hmm. the mood and all that it's also very boring, and it's a section that could have been cut in half because of how much shit goes wrong for, like, seemingly just kind of stupid little reasons. Oh, it's just, it's just like, you gotta do this now, you gotta do this now, you gotta do this now. Yes, it's a series of yeah. unfortunate events. Like, oh, I'm gonna escape from the roof. Oh, no, I'm not. It just the catwalk fell because my partner lit the whole building on fire for, like, no reason. Oh. And it's like, and what? Then- <laughs> and then okay. before that, your operator, um, which I'm sure you know, like in the first yep. film, the, no- the operator is speaking to you, like from the real world, when you're in the Matrix, um, telling you instructions and stuff on the phone. Um, mm-hmm. Your operator is insanely incompetent, and I have this little joke <laughs> theory that he's trying to kill you. Which is, <laughs> isn't funny. real. It's not. He's not yeah. actually trying that, but. It's just like the whole thing of he sends you across the building to a door that he should have known was locked since he can track so many other things in the Matrix. And then he's like, well, it's locked. I guess I got to send you back across the building to this power room, which you should have went to in the first place. Uh, Sorry. I I don't know. That's dumb. Yeah. Okay. I I was. Yeah. That's weird. (laughs) Fuck. Yeah. Do you like the game? It's um, it's like kind of a nostalgia thing for me, to be mm-hmm. honest. Um, also, <laughs> I hate to cut it here, but I really gotta be right back for like five minutes. Oh, that's, that's okay. I have to go to the bathroom too. That's Same. A perfect yeah. Time. So like, okay. I'll be right back. We'll continue well, that like the nostalgia yeah. and the game. Yeah. So be right yeah. Back. One sec. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, right. Okay. Well, we're back. Uh, so I asked you. Uh, whether or not you actually like Enter the Matrix? Yes. Um, it's kind of a, I don't know, a love-hate relationship, sort of, like a bittersweet, like, yeah, I have a lot of memories with Enter the Matrix, like a lot of nostalgia, and it was an escape for me as a kid, you know? Like, oh my god, my favorite movie, The Matrix, say, flying around with guns and stuff, it was epic, epic game, mm-hmm. I want to play the game, I want to be in the Matrix, right? But, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has a lot of problems. Like even for 2003 standards, it it was a very clearly rushed game because I don't know if you knew this, but the Wachowskis released in the same year of 2003, they released The Matrix Reloaded, Sega Matrix, Enter the Matrix, The Animatrix, uh-huh. cool. and Matrix Revolutions. So that's What was four Revolutions? The Matrix Revolutions. Yeah, that's that's uh the third Wait. movie. The th- they they put out, wait, two movies in one year. Two movies, a, a game, and a side project. They actually yeah. wait what? In the I same didn't, year. The si- no, I don't believe that. Hang on, Matrix 
the fuck it release dates. No way. Yeah, so the Matrix Reloaded and Enter the Matrix came out on the same day in 2003. A month later, the Animatrix came out, and a couple months later, the serious? third movie came out. Yeah, no uh, shit. So, wait, that ambition reloaded and destroyed them. Uh, reloaded is May, May 2003, and Revolutions is November. Why the fuck did they do that? I don't know. It's like probably the whole anime thing that you mentioned prior. It's like, oh, we gotta. We gotta top the first movie, and we gotta get all big and philosophical. We gotta That's do bigger, because so... bigger is better. Is it? And then they <sighs> fucked it. Yeah. Is it like, like now you've got like Netflix shows coming out, and it's like every episode is an hour, right? Is it like that? Is it just like two big episodes of a of a of like a TV show or something like that? Um. I just know that when they were all filming for this, they were filming scenes for the second movie, the third movie, and for the Enter the Matrix scenes at the same time. That's which was probably a nightmare. Insane. Why would you? Why would you? And they st they still got it to come out faster than Avatar, the Avatar sequels. Lol. Yeah. <laughs> With the same strategy. Crazy. I guess my biggest question too was like. So the first Matrix came out in 1999, like late 1999, yeah. or early 1999 actually, but anyway. Yeah. I want to know what the hell the Wachowskis were doing for like, <laughs> I don't know, I guess like the year after that, like probably taking a break or something, that's fine, but they yeah, should have probably used that time before starting to film, which I'm imagining they started to film in 2001 or 2002. Um, they should have, I don't know, thought about this shit more, like I said, and, well, shoulda, woulda, coulda, man. Uh... Biggest what could have been, yeah. just like the movies, Enter the Matrix, the game is the biggest what could have been, and it's, I think, the best attempt at a, um, a, an interesting Matrix tie-in game versus, like, the Matrix Online, which... I was... <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask and you Path about of Neo. That. Yeah, Path of Neo is a pretty ridiculous game. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> it stretches its source material very, very thin instead of trying to do something new, um, mm. in my opinion. Cause like, and I've heard that a third of the game is just a, tutor a tutorial, which is pretty <laughs> annoying. And the controls are <laughs> fucking clunky. And wow, it shares some similar qualities to Enter the Matrix. But yeah, what yeah. makes Enter the Matrix so interesting to me is like partially because you are not Neo. Like, that's, yeah. that was the biggest complaint about Enter the Matrix. was like, I don't want to play as now. will be a ghost. I want to play as Neo. And I'm just sitting there like, why? He's, like, overpowered and arguably yeah. pretty boring. Versus it's not somebody interesting. Who's, yeah, versus yeah. somebody who's, like, vulnerable, like Ghost and Niobe. They have to, like, do these very, like... They have to really think about shit before they go and do it. And they have to avoid agents because they can't just kill agents like Neo can. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, spoilers, but... Yeah, sure. Have you played Deus Ex? I haven't, and I've been meaning to play the first game, Dude, which I have on Steam. Yeah. I played it pretty recently, a few months ago. Uh, great fucking game. Do you have any facts S to back that up? Still, uh, my experience. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Just, I think that's um, a line from the game, I don't know. Oh, do you have any facts to back that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I had, like, an especially long playthrough of the game because um, I decided to go a low kill run, which meant that I, you know, I did some killing, but I kind of tried to restrict it. And it's not a game where you can kill everyone. Like, you are just straight up not given the means to do that. Like, everything. Um... You, you can go, like, mostly kill roots, uh, but it it's quickly gets really difficult. Um, so I tried to do, like, a, a low kill run because I thought that was more interesting, and I liked the sneaking. So that also meant that I kind of had to spend a lot more time, like, learning the, learning the maps and the enemy patterns and all that, but uh, I thought it was... At least from, like, a... I don't know why I went into that. 
detail of how long it took me. I guess just to say that like it it is kind of long if you if you decide to go that route and like you you're playing it the first time. Um, I can imagine it being a lot faster if I was a little more aggressive, but um, it's v pretty lengthy, and I feel like it. But I didn't feel like it was padded. That's why I was actually thinking about that when you're talking about padding. Because, like, it just kind of goes, and it, it goes and goes and goes. But, like, it's always moving forward to something. And it's also just, it's very, it's obviously inspired by The Matrix. Actually. Wait. It said Matrix was 1999? Yeah, the first Matrix was 1999. Deus Ex might have begun development before that. Now that I think about it, because Ion Storm was like 1997, was when the developer was founded. Deus Ex development. I'm actually, I, I always just assumed um, developed over the course of 34 months, culminating in a June 2000 release. So 34 months is about three years. Oh. Deus Ex might have, like, been on, like, roughly the same, like, development t schedule as, like, The Matrix. That's so weird. I never considered that. I always thought yeah. it was inspired. So that means that about a third of that game's development, they could have been inspired by The Matrix, but it's kind of hard to say. Yeah. And it's definitely... I mean, but I mean, like, the script and the style is very reminiscent of that uh it's it cut it also tackles a lot of like philosophical ideas uh there's some hard lines in that game like there's some really <laughs> some really good lines in that game about like government and like information and stuff like that and um uh how much control someone should be allowed to have it's a really interesting game, uh, and it actually, the worst thing, I think the, the, the worst aged thing about it is probably just the collision, to be honest. The collision's kind of whack in some parts of the game, but other than that, yeah, it holds up really well. Uh, I would, I think you would really enjoy it in, like, a, a myriad of ways. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, like, I definitely want to try it, and it's... It's not a really a coincidence that all around the same time there was a lot of these sort of cyberpunk-inspired cyberpunk mm -hmm. um, games since in the 90s. I think there was a lot of, like, Ghost in the Shell, for example. The first Ghost in the Shell movie was incredibly inspirational to a lot of people, like me, for mm -hmm. example. I feel like it's probably one of my biggest inspirations for my uh, cyberpunk novel. But anyway, that um, movie delves into a lot of philosophy and sort of this um sort of like dystopian world cyberpunk world and it, it heavily inspired the matrix and it wouldn't be a surprise if both deus ex and the matrix are both inspired by that inspired by you know the neuromancer which was a book in 1986 yeah. that basically birthed cyberpunk like it basically bridged dystopian into cyberpunk like it basically became a genre because of the neuromancer arguably it's like the bible for uh cyberpunk art yeah uh i'm just reading quick quick uh <laughs> thing from the wikipedia page so for game design influences deus ex was influenced by half-life fallout thief the dark project and goldeneye 007 which is interesting and Story-wise, it was influenced by something called Colossus the Forbin Project, The Manchurian Candidate, Robocop, The X-Files, and Men in Black <laughs> uh, as reference points. God, Men in Black is such a <laughs> weird series. I like the first and two movies. Like I love the first two movies, though. Mm -hmm. like, they're very interesting. Like It's a very uh, interesting like little dystopian take. On, um, like, fantasy, I guess. Uh, 
And it also I've introduced a lot of people yeah. to some really weird fetishes, but anyway. <laughs> Wait, I haven't seen the movie in a while, what do you mean? Oh, in the first five minutes of the second movie, there's a vor scene. A whore scene? A vor scene. Like oh, a vor scene. <laughs> yeah, no, no shit. Oh, like, we'll no. watch it, I'm not lying. I can't, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. The What do I remember about Men in Black? I remember watching it with, like, my mom and my brother. And there's that scene, isn't there that scene where, like, there's, like, a redneck couple or whatever. And they, like, there's, like, an alien or something outside their house and it's, like, night. <laughs> and, like, the husband is going to, like, inspect it. And the wife, like, steps out, and he goes, Get your ass back inside! Yeah, that's the And I just remember like... my mom just going, Never talk to a woman like that. <laughs> that's the only thing I remember about Men in Black. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, was little, I was a little kid when I saw that. Yeah, oh, I, I also completely forgot. It terrifying for a little kid. I don't remember. I, I watched I it when I was a little kid, though. I remember watching the second movie in that war scene, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that much. I wasn't scared by a whole lot of stuff when I was a kid. Like, I'm trying to think. I got scared by stuff that was, like, grounded in reality, but, like, monster stuff never really scared me. Like, I was always more afraid that someone was going to, like, a real person was going to kill me. Yeah, than, it's like, kind of same. Monster. Yeah. And I always thought, like, psychological horror was probably the best, like, in the sense that it would probably freak me out as well. Like, the movie The Cube. Like, if you were just fucking put oh, in a God. series of yeah. rooms with a bunch of strangers, I feel like that would be... I don't know, the most difficult and scary part, ironically, is the other people you're with more than the environment itself, almost. Like, it's, I don't know, it's a very interesting yeah. uh, movie. Not the sequel, though. The sequel, uh... There's a sequel good. to The Cube? Yeah, it's called The Cube 2 Hypercube. <laughs> it's a dog shit movie. <laughs> they, they should have gotten to a third one so they could call it, like, Cube Cubed. Like, Alien... Three. I don't know, like, not to, like, spoil, well, I I'm going to spoil a second movie, whatever. Go for but it. They basically do the anime thing where they have to top the first movie, so they, like, raise the stakes, in like, indefinitely, but it, in turn, removes a lot of mystery, and it removes a lot of, like, care, because there's, like, way more characters, and they kind of just die off from, like, really uh -huh. silly CGI effects. <laughs> um anyway and they talk about like the cube not being only a cube but it's a tesseract so it's oh basically my God. it's like a super cube yeah it's a 4d cube <laughs> that's apparently collapsing in on itself and mm. i don't really understand why but it's just i don't know it's, it's like more, never explained it, what is more cube than cube <laughs> whoa, dude, it's... Whoa, you can... But do, do you know how you can represent a Tesseract with a Matrix? Which is literally oh just... Oh, my God. I, anyway, yeah, I know. I've, I have took too many <laughs> engineering things, but yeah, I've had to complete... I've basically had to prove a Tesseract with math, and it's... I don't, I don't know. It's kind of lame. <laughs> it's just lame. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Calculus 3 is not fun. I will say that. Yeah. But anyway. What do you think... I was thinking about this in terms of... Uh, it's pretty easy to, f to find, like, movie sequels that were substantially worse than the first one. Or than the, the previous ones. Do you have any examples, like, outside of movies of things you just thought just, like, completely shit the bed with their sequels? Um... Because I got one in mind. Well... <laughs> Of course, The Matrix, but... Outside I mean, of movies. Outside of movies. Yeah. Right. Oh, outside of movies. So, yeah. a sequel to, like, maybe a game? A game, a book, a show, or... I guess a show. Or whatever. An album. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> An album. 
I guess one example I can think of is like, I know this isn't necessarily a sequel, but it is sort of supposed to be like a replacement or a successor or something. Mm -hmm. But I remember back then thinking that Teen Titans was like one of the coolest show of all time, oh, like shows God. of all time, right? <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah, you already know where this is going. Like Teen <laughs> Titans Go is just like this parody comedy, like yeah, completely shit the bed different stuff. Yeah, from just what a you joke. Liked. Yeah. Like, Robin, they basically memed on Robin for an entire episode about how he's, like, useless and has no powers, and I'm just sitting there like, oh, you mean, I remember that arc in regular Teen Titans as well, and... If, oh, yeah, it, <laughs> you're right. It's sort of like the thing of, like, Robin is, like, supposed to be, like, this calculated leader, and, like, he has, like, fighting skills and, like, a lot of... I don't know, it's not as, like, clear-cut as, like, the other characters, like Starfire mm -hmm. and Raven and, like, Beast Boy, but anyway, yeah, that's that's a pretty solid example, in my opinion. Like, I, Teen Titans Go is a very annoying show <laughs> that definitely flander, like, what is it? Fucking, like, flanderizes? Yeah, flander like, flanderization, yeah. Yeah, it flanderizes the characters, and it's, um, bad. <laughs> Have you considered you're maybe not the target audience? Probably not. <laughs> um, definitely not. Like, by the time Teen Titans Go was out, I was, like, I don't know, like, mid-teens or some shit. And I yeah. already was, like, kind of phasing out of television, definitely, at that point. Yeah. Uh, I think another sequel or a successor that was not too great was, like, um, I remember watching the... I think the last Airbender, Avatar, and yeah. that sh that oh, series Korra? was great. Yeah, and then Legend yeah. of Korra was like, eh. I mean, it got like way shittier the more it went on, basically. Yeah, I heard about that show's development, and apparently what happened was that every single season there's like four seasons, I think, and every single season they were like on the verge of cancellation. So every season ends with, like, a definitive wrap-up of, like, the story's done. And then they got renewed, and they were like, the story is not done. And so it's, like, super weird, like, start-stop. Like, oh, we have to, like, build up this entire, like, new thing. Like, all these arcs that came to an end. Well, now these characters have to come back. <laughs> uh, they just did that, like, three times in a row until they finally got actually canceled. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> just, then like, you not have... Renewed the opposite well i don't know what's more annoying that or like my the, what my name is earl ran into where it ended on a cliffhanger and then it got canceled and was never renewed again oh shit which i don't know if you've seen like, my name is earl it's i kind don't of like that old, was that was yeah. like a that was a deep pick i was not expecting a my name is earl reference <laughs> yeah um yeah i don't know i i I'm also, <laughs> I guess if you want to talk about, like, old shows and films, like, for, I'm a big um, Kevin Smith fan, which would really? either make people be like, oh, cool, <laughs> or wow, you, that sucks, Kevin Smith is awful, and I'm just like, okay, whatever, I enjoy Kevin Smith, whether, like, regardless, don't care. Sure. Anyway, because when I was growing up, I, wa I watched a lot of Kevin Smith films, like, um, for example, like, Clerks. Clerks 2, Mallrats, um, mm -hmm. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, and I don't know, like, I don't know if you've ever seen any of those movies. None. I don't think I've ever seen a Kevin Smith movie. Damn. Well, it would have <laughs> been definitely better if you watched them back then, because some of them have, like, very aged comedy. Oh. Like, it definitely <laughs> is a product of its time when you yeah. watch it. Like, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, um, that's like a 2001 film, and for some oh, yeah. reason, fucking Jesus, for some fucking reason in the early 2000s, shit jokes and fart jokes were just... Oh, yeah, the gross-out humor. Yeah, People dude. Fucking, like, I, dude, I'm on the same boat. I hate I hate that shit, ironically. <laughs> yeah, and it's... Which is really weird, right? Because people, like, joke about, like, cum and balls and shit, but... but yeah, no, shit, I, cum, cum jokes? Bad. Dude. Dude, any, any day. Shit jokes? Uh, you gotta catch me on a good day for that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me up with those cum jokes, though. Yeah, dick and balls at the same time. <laughs> I had a question for you. That's a pretty oh, sure. big one. Oh, go um, ahead. 
Yeah, I've been wanting to ask this. Um, oh my god. So I'm straight. Just to get this correct, Moist Critical has reacted to two of your videos, <laughs> right? No, only one. Only one, and that's the um, the Sega the Konami. Yakuza one. No, oh, the, the Konami, Konami one. Yeah, no. Okay. So the, the the Sega and the actual Yakuza one popped off entirely on its own, out of nowhere, and actually much harder than the Konami one. Interestingly. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was it was interesting because it was like um, the Konami one actually started getting some views. Like it it popped off a little. It was sitting at like my usual view count at the time, which was like thirty for a while and then randomly probably because of the crow cat video randomly resurged as it usually does um people started getting recommended that video i think uh or my video specifically off of that one so it got like a few thousand views and then one guy was like hey what was his name harmful his name was harmful i still remember his username he was like someone more people need to see this and then like months later critical was doing a like a YouTube night on a stream and harmful suggested my video to him and then uh, he ended up watching the whole like 40 minute thing and actually liked it quite a bit and it was surreal because I was getting comments uh, while the stream was still going on I was getting comments from people who came to that video to tell me that he was watching it and I was like about to go to bed and I turned on the stream and like I couldn't go to sleep for like three hours because <laughs> like my oh, hands no. were shaking I was like what the fuck is going on right um yeah so then it got to what, I think 16 17 thousand something like that uh currently and then randomly the Sega video just started climbing 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 a few months ago and I was like Okay, with like seemingly no impetus, no push, it was like super weird. Like Sega wasn't in the news, Yakuza wasn't in the news, just random. Mm -hmm. Okay. What well, do you ask? <laughs> so right, that wasn't the entire question. That was just kind oh, of like sorry, I confirming. fucking went on a big rant. Oh, you're good. <laughs> so he covered the Konami three video. Yeah. Okay. So and the Sega one just blew up on its own. Yeah, just random. Okay. So, the biggest question here, um, let me give a little bit of context to this question a little bit before I ask it, but Ryan, Max, and I, um, so next Ryan promo, is, Max and Ryan I, is next spell. Yeah. Yes. Um, we've been kind of talking about it for a couple of months now about um, about this. Let me, let me just kind of ask this. So, you sure. pretty much 100,000%, I, I imagine... Or how much you ever, how much you ever like support it, right? You like reaction type content, like what oh, we're talking does. about this. <laughs> yeah, because this is an interesting topic. Yeah, can, can, right. finish your question. Yeah, finish what you're gonna say. I was basically the the core question is yeah, do you support reaction like Twitch people pretty much like reacting to your content and getting a lot of um, viewers? Well, it's it's it, interesting, like right? It's right. interesting because there's a lot of there isn't like a not a ton of data on this. Unlike there's some, so it, I guess people are probably pretty familiar with the controversy around like, oh, is it ethical to react to other people's content? And um, it sort of depends. So like I can't lie, right? Like I was sitting at maybe two hundred subscribers. And after Critical reacted to my video, or he watched my video on stream, uh, I jumped to about a thousand within like three days. Oh, okay. Shit, um, Jesus. So I got a huge, it's the biggest, mm, one of the biggest, I'd have to double check like my graph or whatever. One of the biggest spikes in, in subscribership that I've, uh, that I've had in the roughly two years that I've been doing this, almost two years that I've been doing this. Um, oh fuck yeah, that anniversary is coming up in a few months. And, uh, so like, I can't lie and say that like, it's hurt me or whatever. Like, yeah, no, I definitely gained quite a bit, um, from, uh, from him watching my video on his stream and like i'm gonna be honest 
I don't think he adds... I think he's a cool guy. I don't think he adds, like, a ton to the videos he watches. <laughs> right. So, like... Like... It was, pre it was pretty much just, like, him putting on a video for, like, whatever... How many people are watching? Like, 70,000 people were watching that. Um, there's another... Do you know Asmongold? Yes, I think he's, yeah. like, the long-haired um, YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, or he does, Twitch streamer. Not he's mainly a streamer, but he, he right. uploads... He has editors who clip his stream for YouTube. His reactions are... Fu I fucking love his reactions. Because every time he reacts to a video, the video, if it's, like, 30 minutes, the reaction video is, like, 50 minutes. Because he just fucking talks and talks, and it isn't, like, filler. He just goes off on these, like, crazy tangents that are genuinely funny and like I, f I find them entertaining like i feel like he genuinely adds so much to the content that like yeah you could just like watch the original um but like watching his reaction like i'll watch something and then i'll watch his reaction to it because i'm just curious what the fuck weird shit he's gonna talk about during it <laughs> it's like maybe not even related um, so, like, there, there's, like, definitely, like, a, there's a spectrum of, like, how much someone adds to the content. This is very unorganized. I'm just, I'm just, you're getting, like, my straight, like, brain scattershot answer. Um, I can't say, because I've only had that one instance of someone reacting to my content. So, I can't say, like, I've heard of people who, like, oh, someone reacts to their video and their viewership... <sighs> Um, goes down, or it'll like spike, and then it'll drop off more dramatically, or something like that. Um, I can literally only talk from like w a single point of reference, and that one point of reference was positive. So you know, if a big streamer was to watch one of my videos, I would have I'd, ha I'd have no problem with that. If I'm gonna be honest, uh, I don't know if my answer would change. Um. Uh, if I was if I was a lot bigger, um, it might be something that's straight up just like more helpful for people who are really small like myself, and not for as much for people who are. I uh, I don't know what benchmark you would put for like what would make someone bigger or something. Maybe it's like relative. To the size of, of like, <laughs> hang on. I'm theory crafting in my head real quick. <laughs> maybe it's like, maybe it's like relative. The, the, the audiences, if, if the person reacting has a bigger audience than the person they're reacting to. And the person they're reacting to is under a certain size. It would maybe it's more beneficial but if they're above a certain size maybe it's less beneficial uh despite the reactor having a larger audience i have no idea i'm just throwing out random theories <laughs> yeah um i'm pretty much like 80 90 percent on board with like reaction stuff mm -hmm. as long as it's like not literally just well oh, yeah, I'm, guy... I'm even cool with like just you know, random, like, re-uploads of my shit, and, like, because it's sort of, like, a dispersion. Like, I feel like the reach does get out there, right? Like, I'm pretty pro-reaction, of course, and um, mm -hmm. it's just definitely... There's, like, a big argument to be made that YouTubers, of course, they make money, like, when they get to a certain point. The smaller guys, not so much, but when you get to a certain point you start getting sponsors and like money and stuff whatever cool and sometimes people like spend two weeks months like years on a project and <laughs> they get money right they get like, cool right but then like a bigger streamer reacts to that big hard project and arguably gets more money from you know <laughs> yeah. the, them reacting to it than the person who created the video on youtube and that's not really the core issue i have core issue i have is that like they definitely like when they like some people do react to it and don't don't they're not very transformative about it um yeah. they 
want to argue sometimes that like that exposure to smaller people is like the good and all that and I sort of argue like yeah sure but I feel like a very very small percentage most of the time actually seek that original video let alone subscribe like the percentages are insanely low mm -hmm. and uh, for bigger people like you know whatever they're already big anyway but I guess for smaller people, it's more so like, well, I don't know, I didn't get much out of, out of it, I guess a little bit of exposure, and then for bigger people, it's like, well, when there are re-uploads of basically like Twitch clips of my video on YouTube, that's basically pulling people to that video and getting them money versus, you know, the original YouTuber who created that long crap video, because, I mean, like, it, for example, like, it does take Nexpo, like, a month to release a video does like research does all the editing filming yeah. whatever and then someone reacting to it it only takes like basically the amount of the video time and then it gets re-uploaded on youtube and it gets millions of views so i can kind of see like where the problem is for small people where the problem is for big i mean i guess small like me i really shouldn't be complaining if somebody <laughs> reacts to my stuff like mm -hmm. whatever um and there's like a I guess there might be a few people that also argue that, oh, well, you're just reacting to video games other people made anyway, which I disagree with because... Yeah, that's, what we're, that's dumb. Yeah, what that's we're totally, doing on YouTube yeah, is totally insanely different. transformative. And it's, yeah. <laughs> on YouTube, it's literally as easy as having, like, one song for three seconds on our video to, like, basically pull monetization from it, like, which is fucking insane. To, to be honest like that that's not even the streamers or anything that's just like yeah it's labels. bullshit but, you know funny enough yeah. um my two someone asked me one time uh why don't i mon because i'm i'm i've like openly said that i don't want to put ads on my videos that's why i just do patreon and someone asked me like hey i get why you don't want to do it because i explained my whole reasoning but they're like would you ever consider like maybe just running ads I'm like your most popular videos. And I was like, well, it's funny because I literally can't because they're both copyright claimed. <laughs> yeah, freaking, the especially si because they're about <laughs> Japanese companies. Like they No, it's not quick. even it. You oh. want to know what the fucking claims are? What? On Sega and the actual Yakuza, I believe the claim is... Let me real quick double check just to make sure that I'm getting this right. Some it's fake ass LLC I, that wants money, maybe? No, it oh. was, um... Uh, sort of views. Copyright claim. See details. Yeah, yeah. It was because I used a piece from the Quake soundtrack. Oh, damn it. Focus, which I've used bits of the Quake soundtrack before. I know um, never gotten a claim. Never gotten a claim. And because for the fucking Nine Inch Nails, um, got, I got copyright claimed on behalf of their publisher. And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot, like, Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails did the soundtrack. I, well, you know, I remembered. But I didn't even, that didn't even occur to me because I use game OST in everything. Um, never had a problem with it. Uh, I know why. Well, except for one other time. What, what do you mean, why? Yeah, sorry, I'm gonna, so, oh, yeah. I remember explaining to Max one day, like, you know you can't use the Quake soundtrack anymore in, in videos without having it claimed, but, like, as of because about of the a year or, or two ago, and he says, like, wait, what the fuck, why, I've used Quake all the time, and I'm saying, well, the first Quake soundtrack recently got re-released. Yes, I was, that was, cause I was, remember, because I played it, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm playing Quake. And then I suddenly get that copyright claim, and I'm like, what? And then it, it clicked. I was like, no way. It isn't because they, like, re-released it and, like, refreshed the copyright nope, yeah. on it. They totally That's did. so dumb. So fucking lame. <laughs> that was right. my theory. Think, yeah, but, yeah. You're completely right. And, um, like, cause it damn. sucks because Quake has one of my favorite soundtracks of all oh, time it, because it's, it's created by Trent Reznor, which great, is one of my favorite it's such, artists. It, it's such great atmospheric soundtrack right like i use it the one i specifically use is um the focus which is like it's just that like high-pitched like yeah, kind of whining 
and it's and it's just it's like great just creepy background like tension basically which is why i used it in that video because you know i'm talking about like yakuza activities oh, and i'm I like song. perfect song i'm like perfect song to uh play in the background is this like high tension but kind of like atmospheric quake thing that like, kind of sets you on edge and then the other one is actually fr on the on the Konami video is um, I was not expecting to get this one because so there is a licensed song that I used in that video in the Konami video. Um, it's at the very end credits. It's um, called Final Land by a Japanese artist called Gutavolk. Um, wonderful song. And I actually included it in the video. It was like my fifth video. I knew that it was, I was like, okay, I could see myself getting claimed for this, but I didn't give a fuck because it was like my fifth video, like, oh no, I'm not going to get monetized, <laughs> whatever. Um, but I actually didn't get caught for that. That one's, excuse me, that one slipped through fine. The one that got caught was um, uh, Hymnopedia number, number one, which I used near the end. That's the, the... Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> that song. Apparently, that's uh, copyrightable. <laughs> Didn't realize. And it plays in the background pretty quietly um, for like a minute or so. Yeah, literally a minute. And it's claimed. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> really? <laughs> so, like, that's uh, my two. Do I don't have any. I have. I have one other copyright claim on, uh, oh, well, that was, I did a video on the video game music that was used in the Tokyo Olympics, which I was like, fair, all right. <laughs> um, and then I'm pretty sure I got one restricted because randomly I used a song from Mortal Kombat 3 that's copyrighted. Yeah, the bridge, and it, it's weirdly enough, um, the part that, that got claimed is like the 2021 remaster when I used the original game, which is okay, because um, because it, it's now under like W Warner Brothers because they own <laughs> Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Fuck Warner Brothers, dude! It's like, like it's I, such a fucking nightmare. <laughs> yeah, you can't even play through Enter the Matrix with the music on without getting a copyright claim. Oh, that's the worst. Pretty much the yeah. entire soundtrack was compl composed by Rob D Dugan, like Rob Duggan, Dugan, whatever, however you say his name, yeah. most of it, the orchestral shit. So it's yeah. like one of those games that's just chock full of like licensed shit. It's, it's that's pretty like, insanely annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's like um, uh, Star Wars games now. Oh, God. So, like, for instance, I think most Star Wars games now use original music, but I made a video on uh, dead MMOs, and one of them was Star Wars Gal uh, Galaxies. And that game's, almost its entire soundtrack is literally from the movies. Almost yeah. entirely ripped from there. There might be more than that, but it's, like, all movie soundtrack stuff. Obviously, that game was literally, like, years and years. Like, you could never release a game like that in the age of streaming. Or, actually, you could. It was the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Do you remember that? Oops. I actually don't. And I make yeah. an argument to... I think I made an argument to Max one day that the most... Probably the most copyright-heavy, if there were to be, like, a number one spot. Like, if you play this for even half a second, your shit's claimed. Um, it's probably yeah. the Star Wars theme. If you play yeah. like half a second of the first <laughs> chime, I'm sure you'll get claimed. I'm almost positive. <laughs> it's like the was a one percent. You can set your uh, what percentage it'll get claimed at if you're the copyright holder. They just have that shit to set to like one percent if it's any of it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's like sniper rifles aiming at it, like yeah. from all countries, you know, like yeah. all the time. So the Guardians of the Galaxy game that came out like last year. Um, basically used, just like the movies, used a bunch of, uh, like, you know, 70s and 80s music. Which is, like, cool, because that's, you know, what the movies do. It's, like, part of their sort of aesthetic. But you literally... Now, thankfully, actually, they include streamer modes, for instance. Where, like, uh, 
it I, I think it just replaces the music or sometimes just turns it off uh so like yeah that was that was one of the I'm pretty sure, like, I remember hearing streamers, like, they would get sent review copies, or sorry, not review copies, like, like, copies of the game to play on stream from the devs, and the devs were like, turn that on, <laughs> turn that on, like, or they were like, no, before you even start the game up, or, or before you even stream it, start the game up and uh, turn that on, because you don't want to stream, because it's literally from, like, second one, <laughs> you don't even want to risk, like, going into the menus on stream without that turned on or kingdom hearts 3 because that also had copyrighted music from like hikaru utada and and all that um because all that's licensed uh yeah it's usually a problem that i get to avoid because of how much game ost i use but uh sometimes things happen yeah, I definitely am at that point in my YouTube memes where, like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> and in this Matrix video, I'm just gonna... It's gonna be kind of a joke about, like, how much copyrighted music <laughs> I could fit into one video. Yeah. Because I seriously don't care. Like, I don't... Um, Ryan thinks that if you have copyrighted music in your videos that it might affect Discovery, but Max and I don't think so. Like, there's kind of a... A little bit of yeah. an argument there like we it's sort of like an unknown i don't think mm -hmm. it does like i can't monetize my shit right now i literally cannot like i don't have enough yeah if you're not at the views yeah, not at the benchmark yeah yeah which is annoying because back then i could monetize and like i actually had money like in the account or whatever like on standby oh. and then all of a sudden they were just like no you, never mind what do you mean like, what it, do you mean back then maybe it's still there i have no idea but I have a Patreon as well, which I only opened because there was somebody who was insisting that they donated, which <laughs> they never did. But oh, funny. anyway, like I don't want to put a PayPal. I'll just be like, yeah, just sub for like a month just, with this. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Do you think uh, getting age restricted impacts video discoverability or something? Yes. Do you think it hits you? Yes. Yes, I think it does. Really? Okay. Because that's something I've been like. Uh, I don't know. It's definitely something that could happen on videos on my channel. Because sometimes I get to some pretty, like, out there kind of gnarly topics <laughs> that crop up. You know, Yeah, like it's pretty annoying how they get into that. Because like I think every video, I believe this is for every video, like, I, I might be wrong here, but I think they do... Uh, like commentary like closed captions that's what it is they automatically generate closed captions for every video now and just yeah. depending on what you say like they can immediately age restrict your shit upon upload because of analyzing what you're saying um that's from so the closed captions yeah because you know i made an entire video on porn games right not age restricted <laughs> which is crazy i don't know how i managed to avoid that in the script or something but like yeah if you're no careful restriction. enough uh fucking what did i even call it i changed the name i think at some point uh yeah i don't know but it was it was like fuck yeah like pretty i don't know pretty raunchy i guess uh oh yeah oh the fuck the name of the video is soft locks hard cocks <laughs> And it didn't get age. A cox is censored with like two slashes, but it's like <laughs> the thumbnail is like a horrible pixel art naked woman with big censor bars over her. <laughs> it's like, how does this not get <laughs> age restri n restrictions? None. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like, um. It's also interesting to hear about all of the, um, I guess I've been around a lot of YouTubers at this point, like in person mm -hmm. and everything, and it's weird to sort of hear all the different kinds of opinions about thumbnails and like what you need to do to get a very catchy looking thumbnail, which oh, yeah. usually I all, like, I pretty much disagree with like 90% of people who talk about that, unless it's like Max or Ryan, because it seems like mm -hmm. they're very, um, 
they sort of see what works and all that and I'm pretty simple with mines if you look at mines like it's literally just sort of yeah. the main key element with some sort of mystery memes in there it's not like <laughs> oh you need text or oh you need giant arrows and circles and annoying bullshit um, I know some people who genuinely put their all of their shit um, through like this fucking bot that basically tests like oh. how clickable it is, and then really? the video ends up failing anyway, even though it has high clickability or some shit. Like it's just it's dumb. hilarious. Yeah, that's. Uh, do you so you don't think about that at all? I mean, like an insanely clickable thumbnail? No, not really. I just think mm -hmm. of what like comes to mind and what looks interesting to me, and I'm just like, whatever. Like my worst thumbnail is probably like. I don't know, maybe the one for my Raising Cane's video isn't, like, very creative. I'm just like, whatever, it's just the logo <laughs> it's the and logo. some blood-looking <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah, it's sort of a... There's also a face that you can't see in the picture, but, yeah, I, I like doing the spooky stuff, like, for <laughs> stuff like that. Little Easter eggs that I'm I'm only aware of until someone mm. finds it. Yeah. I, I think about like it... That. Yeah. I think about it a little bit. Uh... So my one of my problems creatively is that I think of I think of titles and I'm like I get really attached to this title. And I'm like are people going to click on that? I don't know, but I really want it to be the title. So that's just what I set it as. Uh and sometimes like I can't like so for my last video for instance on which was on the Brazilian, the officially licensed Brazilian Mega Man comic from the 90s, which is fucking insane. Um, I literally just couldn't think of, like, a title that I liked a lot, so I'm like, eh, fuck it. I'll just go with, like, a generally appealing title and I'll put tits in the thumbnail. Oh, well. <laughs> I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. But, like, the one right before that, uh, I love... I love the title Street Fighter V's Fiasco because it's about Lupe Fiasco and Street Fighter V. I'm like, that's it has to be the title. It has to be the title. <laughs> it can't be anything else. Um, do you have like a favorite thumbnail you've ever done? Um, honestly, my favorite thumbnail? Um... Well, I don't have a lot of videos like on my channel to really pick from, but I mm -hmm. guess my favorite has probably been the Are You Afraid of Monsters thumbnail and Yeah. I don't know if people have really gathered this at this point or like care or whatever, but I have two main project well, I have two stream videos that will be taken down when I get my next video up. I'm gonna put them on my second channel. Mm -hmm. Um the video before each big project sort of ties in like it's sort of like a prequel to the next video mm -hmm. and that sort of shows with the thumbnails sort of and then like the if you play them back to back like presage into afraid of monsters it basically flows directly into the video so is yeah. suture and raising canes like there's basically hidden bullshit like you know messages and all that in the previous videos i'm not gonna give too much away but um yeah probably the afraid of monsters thumbnail to answer the question okay my favorite one that i've ever done well i have i have a few ones that i really liked i actually really like the one for sega and the actual yakuza i thought it was like really simple and and like clean and yeah. i had fun making it uh, I also really liked <laughs> Night of the Living Dead MMOs, which is uh, the because it's about it's about dead. So the concept because it was it was a Halloween video. The concept was that it was MMOs which had their live servers had gone down and then they'd gotten like community. I call them legacy servers to like resurrect them as like nonprofits basically. So the idea was that it was it was the night of the living dead MMOs because it's MMOs that have died and come back to life. They're like zombies in their like community servers. That was the idea. So the thumbnail is a recreation of the poster for Night of the Living Dead, but with the uh, with 
<laughs> examples taken instead of like all the people on the cover of it it's just examples from the games i talked about and i actually changed there's like this text underneath on the poster i actually changed the text under so that it it was about like let me find I can't even it read that. <laughs> yeah you can't read it but oh so it's like so the original says like they keep coming back in a bloodthirsty lust for flesh or something but i changed it to chicken tendies <laughs> and there's like a, a guy eating in the like, bottom right corner there's a guy and in the original he's eating like a chi- like a human limb or something and i changed it to a chicken tender and it's just like i had so much fun making this i thought the colors were nice yeah, it was, yeah. i like I the was, yakuza uh, one too i'm all about like the clean thumbnails yeah i try honest. to get i try to get kind of like a minimalist thing sort of Same. i like i like something where i don't love like just putting giant text in uh in a thumbnail um yeah max and i pers- don't agree on text just, at all in thumbnails yeah. <laughs> just personally i i don't know like there's somewhere i have and i thought it, i thought it looked good um yeah. like again soft locks and hard cocks <laughs> like i really like how that looks I like the first... Do- I'm looking at my folder of all my thumbnails right now. I like how uh, the first episode of the Die Hard series looks. Uh, but generally, I'm like not super into it, just for like its own sake. Um, so I, I like to... I don't know if this is a great strategy, but it's what I like. I like to um, make a title and a thumbnail where it gives you like a little idea of what it's about um or or an idea just some kind of an idea but it leaves you kind of curious if that makes sense yes i definitely yeah like a thumbnail that like pretty much um makes you question like what is it about and like i know too many people who definitely just have this like they fall into this very similar mode of thinking where it's like it's got to be a big ass face with like they got to be crying or something and there's got to be like <laughs> fucking radial zoom blur behind them and shit like it's so fucking predictable it's so annoying like yeah. i definitely think of like something outside the box which um i'm not saying mines are incredibly like that but it definitely like one thing Max like kind of said to me the other day that I didn't really um, see until now, I mean, not the other day, but a few months ago, that he said that he likes the color scheme of my channel, and I was kind of yeah. thinking like, wow, you're right. It's just all dark blue paint like in for your eyes, and then below it's all this like red, mm-hmm. and it's like, hmm, I'm pretty big on colors. That's like one of my favorite fucking elements of like yeah. art is like manipulating the colors and using them to sort of tell a story on their own you know kind of minimalist yeah but like yeah your channel has a real like aesthetic to it that is well it strikes you at first like it's very striking like oh there's like a there's like a theme or like there's like a concept here is what i get from it right i definitely um have like elements that i want to keep returning back to in all my videos like sort of like themes that kind of come full circle and all that in a good way and not really like predictable like i gotta keep making this joke every video about (laughs) balls i don't know not something like that but more so well if you do whatever it's uh, like funny (laughs) it just depends on the execution but Mm -hmm. i mean sort of like the effects that i i like to use and sort of the motifs I, I like motifs a lot like pretty much yeah a lot like especially the raising canes video i'm not going to spoil too much but <laughs> i don't know if you've seen that video have you i haven't <laughs> okay i, I mean, was that, like that's fine i was like oh before we record i should go watch personally i was like two videos i should go like watch everything on his channel and i just forgot i've also been like non-stop working for like oh, the yeah. last three days so i was like That's fine. Eh, it slipped my mind i need to get into that mode of working too but anyway basically mm-hmm. like you, you don't have to watch my videos but like if you watch the raising canes video there are a lot of like double entendres and like a mm-hmm. lot of 
I don't know, like, criticisms of a lot of different things that might not be, like, completely obvious. Like, basically, the way I write is, like, if you catch it, cool, you'll probably enjoy it, but if you don't, <laughs> then you'll miss it, whatever. There's, there's, there's jokes, there's gags that I've put into my videos that I don't know if anyone's gotten yet. <laughs> I love that. Like it's so, and like, like yeah, I respect that. It's I put it in and I'm like there's going to be like five people who know what this is and I'll know who they are because they'll feel compelled to leave a comment about it. <laughs> right. It's like and one really specific one. I'm like I can't believe no one's ever said anything about this. It's like right in your face for like a second. Yeah. <laughs> Are yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like that kind of um, that kind of writing where because I feel like a lot of bigger YouTubers um, and people I've known like not Ryan and Max but like other YouTubers I've met um, they definitely have more of a style of oh yeah I'm gonna tell it to the viewer and then I'm gonna tell it to them like three more times so they yeah get it. that's that's and something that I've yeah. had to like struggle with which i guess you could just call it i don't know exposition which is like in like a storytelling sense it would be exposition but it's like not trusting the audience i guess where i've i've had like i've had like some of those gags i'm talking about that no one's ever mentioned i've considered while writing slash editing like should i make this more apparent should i like emphasize this more so that because like i want to make sure i think this is funny do I want to make sure that people get it? And then I'm like, I, I've kind of had to like limit <laughs> myself of like, no, I think I'll, uh, I'll leave it as kind of just like a little fun thing. <laughs> and yeah. then people who, who do get the reference or whatever will enjoy that. I'll leave it. At, I'll leave it at that. I, I've kind of have to, um, I don't know, stay, stay my hand in that sense. Right. I'd say about 99% of the time, I definitely write it in the way of if you catch it, you catch it. If you miss it, you miss it. Whatever. Yeah. I have, I'm have. i going to do that in my novel as well. A lot of the, you know, commentary and stuff that's about, you know, classism and, you know, politics and some other stuff. Like, more, mostly about, like, corporate, like, corporatism and, like, late stage capitalism and kind of mm -hmm. how fucked it is. Um, that's definitely going to be a theme, but it's going to be like, oh, if you catch it you catch it if you miss it you miss it whatever like i've said but there's only about one percent of the time like there's one moment in this enter the matrix video where i really strike it a couple times like i don't like let me if you in case you didn't know about this let me just let me just kind of explain why this is really really dumb like just for a second oh i mean i think that's fine that's that's like for the viewer i i think it, it i don't know it it depends like repetition and stuff can be really powerful it can also be like annoying. <laughs> it's all about the execution. Yeah, it, it, that's yeah, that's the hard part about creating stuff is that it, it's literally just like, well, this isn't all. It, it's like, well, is, is this bad? Uh, if you do it wrong, yeah. But if you do it good, then no. Whoa, well, oh, how do I do it good? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> On my stream videos, I didn't give a shit. I was just like, whatever. <laughs> And then I put Ray like being like pressed against the cameras. I love thumbnails. that thumbnail. Yeah, I it's love, so I think it's just, I think dude. Fumos are funny. I have like a, I'm so I'm stupid, so I think Fumos are funny. I just there's something just inherently funny about their little faces. Oh yeah, um so the Ray doll is not a Fumo, but I have oh. a knockoff Cerno Fumo, which is like <laughs> probably the the most mean one. And it, God, don't buy a knockoff one that's like twenty five dollars because the ink is like sort of like screwed up on her face, so she looks like she's crying and like it's so just weird, man. Fucked up bootleg Cerno Fumo. I know it's so funny. I might put it in a video as a meme, that's like a horror funny as hell. bit. I don't know, yeah. man. I'll send you pictures of it later, but it's just so. Yeah. Strange. The Ray one it's like though the, is good. It's the it's the Matrix Four of Fumos. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Just and then the Ray is up. like <laughs> Matrix One. <laughs> the Matrix One of Fumos. It's, it's like 
Like, look at this. You like on. the Virgin versus Chad meme. Yeah. You don't have to show this on stream, but like, can, can you see my camera right now? Can you see this? Oh, um. Yeah. Like, look <laughs> at this. It's so funny when you just put it up to the camera. <laughs> yeah, and then when, like, I can make it do this, right? So it's like, what if this was, I just turn, I just go into a meeting and then this was my camera. He's, he's, you guys can't see it right now, but at the, at the audience at home. But Prox is currently in a pitch black room and the only thing I can see is his little Ray Ayanami plush. Yeah. <laughs> that's like super small in the, that he's like holding to like, I don't know, his slap or whatever yes it's a very powerful it's just like at the bottom of the frame it just, yeah. it's just ray just show them this that, that's basically that that's the thing. <laughs> that just show that in the video i don't know anyway <laughs> sorry i'm going off topic uh no it's fine um fuck oh there's one more thing i was going to mention about thumbnails <laughs> uh <clears throat> uh i don't know if you noticed but i put the little <laughs> i put the little um, logo in the bottom left corner of all my thumbnails. Yeah, I for, I like that. Yeah. yeah, so part of the reason for that, and this was like my reasoning from from the very start of the channel, was <clears throat> I I was kind of thinking like, okay, I was making my first thumbnail, and I was like, well, how do I want to have like a style for a thumbnail? Because like I didn't know what kind of videos I was really going to be. I had like a general idea, but. I didn't really know what kind of style I was going to be doing. I was just doing videos that I wanted to make. And then um, I figured like, okay, well, if I don't know, why don't I just give myself the room to be flexible? So every thumbnail can be totally different, something completely different. But you'll always know that it's one of my videos because it has a little logo in the corner, basically. So that's like right. my thought process that like you'll you you'll all you can always and i put it on the left just because it's where your eyes go your eyes scan first so i uh <clears throat> i um i think i actually i learned this in high school uh people's eyes have actually we uh, uh, I, I don't even know what you'd call this where we look on an image has actually changed over time with the internet so this is the thing that they had to um, adapt to an advertising where people's eyes used to scan things from like the top left corner to the bottom right corner now what they do is they actually they scan the center and then i think they go then they'll either go like down and up or up and down and that's how they that's how people like s tend to see things i guess or or, or scan an image basically when they yeah. see something for the first time. So advertising is actually like adapted around that. So I just kind of had that, like I put it on the left, on the bottom, on the bottom left. Cause I figured that's where people are kind of going to be seeing it. So it's immediately identifiable when you see the thumbnail. Right. And it gives me the, the like creative freedom to like kind of do whatever I want, I guess. While being somewhat consistent. Right. Um, yeah. I'm. I'm just gonna send this here for later when you do like my picture or something. I don't know. But now that's my YouTube thing. But yeah, I definitely have like a style um, that I think I'm gonna continue with my yeah. thumbnails about being very heavy on a color focus and being like sort of a um, sort of like a mysterious vibe. Like that's all you get. You get the title and you get like this very i don't know like mysterious thumbnail distorted i guess like distortion i mean i'm probably not going to do that for this next video distortion that much but i will have like mm -hmm. a very heavy emphasis probably on like green and sort Ooh. of like a very it's sort of a simplistic one i don't want to give it too much away but oh yeah because the matrix yeah <laughs> right um, definitely leaning heavy on the topic as well, like as to why I'm making like that, that sort of style of thumbnail or all the elements, ba basically all of the elements of the thumbnail are important to what's being covered. It's not like some clickbaity bullshit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but I definitely do agree with that, um, that 
what you said about scanning with the eyes on thumbnails because I was going to say that I look at the center like immediately yeah. first and then I sort of pick out certain elements with my eyes maybe bottom left top left like sort of in quadrants yeah yeah I think I think it might just be because of like years of reading like web pages right because if you imagine like a computer screen the very top of the screen is usually like mm, usually not that important like if you imagine just like the landing page of a website the top is usually just going to be like uh links to other parts of the website and the actual content is like around in the middle of it so you immediately look towards the middle yeah we don't get uh, a lot of real estate unfortunately with our thumbnails so we really have to yeah yeah you know, think outside the box and like make things um very clear readable whatever but or so i, I try to yeah. seem and people i, I kind of hate this when people make thumbnails like even big youtubers do this but they create a lot of text and some of it is behind the timestamp of the oh thumbnail. that's the worst yeah, yeah. So, so i try not i try to <laughs> never do that or at least have it be like a very small amount of it will be obscured by the time code right or the time yeah like but sometimes it's like a yeah. paragraph and then like the last part <laughs> of the paragraph's covered and it's like bro. yeah or it's like a big line of text at the bottom I'm like i can't read that <laughs> the last part is cut off yeah that stuff is that's annoying i also like try to think about that while i'm making it so generally like the bottom rights of my thumbnails are kind of uh more empty or there isn't as much i usually kind of try to push in information and like stuff towards the left um right the left and the top i guess do you have like a like i don't know if you, do you have like a style guide for your channel a style guide um yeah because because i do so like I have um I'm very specific about like the colors that I use for my branding. Uh cuz it's based off of actual the actual like DOS CGA display palette. Like that palette of colors with like the cyan and the magenta. So I actually have like a folder, sorry, or, like a notepad document with the hex values for each of the colors that I use. I yeah that's interesting yeah. because so. I have a very simple hex value for the blues that I like to use um, mm -hmm. which is oof zero 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 <laughs> zero ff that's literally the blue that I use the most blue you can get like so mm -hmm. I my sort of my cornerstone was the blue screen of death of old oh. Windows PCs it's yeah sort of the blue that I was going for at first. Um, it's definitely, I guess, the cornerstone of my style so far has been around, like, sort of a digital, like, aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like um, sort of the analog, you know, VHS one is fucking so overdone at this point. It's, like, really mm -hmm. annoying. And I sort of... Riff, like sort of riff on riff on that a bit in the Raising Cane's documentary. Like it's definitely mm -hmm. a fucking a joke. Like a lot of the horror elements are like a meme. Like I'm making fun of a lot <laughs> of ARGs and stuff. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I I sort of have like a little cornerstone meme, but it's not something like I write down or anything. It's sort of just a thing I have in my head and that I keep in mind. Um, my banner pretty much has. Um, only at the moment like playstation type of yeah the vib things. ribbon yeah vib ribbon wipe out <laughs> and there's like some other hidden elements of the banner that i'm not gonna just give away but yeah interesting oh, stuff. i can see the matrix text oh yeah that's <laughs> everywhere but yeah yeah there's like some a few other things that are I just love putting little details that people just won't notice, and when they do, they appreciate it, maybe. Or maybe they won't. I don't, I don't care. I just have fun mm -hmm. doing it, which should be the primary goal, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I try not to, like, I don't know. I make... Do you think about at all about, uh, like, how marketable a video is going to be? 
uh, you know, of course, it, like, crosses my mind. I sort of think of, like, pretty good um, titles and maybe some thumbnails here and there. I, I sort of honestly think that all the time I sort of, like, definitely harped way too much on my writing and, like, think that it's either <laughs> too mm -hmm. um, big or, like, it's too dumb, like, either or. And <laughs> I just kind of stopped thinking about that so much because whatever like if people want to continue with it they will if they don't they don't like whatever um and i also kind of think of like the kind of audience that i'm pulling in because of the content of my videos and because of the people i'm associated with like i said you know max and ryan and uh mm -hmm. nick crowley and so on um yeah i i kind of i kind of think of it quite a bit but it's not necessarily my um my ultimate goal like i'd love for it to be like a full-time job I'm, I'm sure you'd like that as well you know big time technically it is full-time oh wow uh i mean i don't make a lot of money but right i'm uh i'm fortunate enough to be in a situation where i don't need to have a regular job i guess okay uh I pretty much just live from home that's fucking awesome <laughs> and uh yeah it's nice um uh my uh dad has been very understanding about he's actually really into me being a youtuber <laughs> hell yeah man because he was very i was like i don't really think i want to go to college and he's like that's fine i don't want to spend money on that <laughs> <laughs> fuck fuck it whatever <laughs> I'll just yeah, buy groceries, is, and I'm like, cool. Uh, <laughs> God, college is pain. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I have a decent amount of, of support, and it's like, I don't know. I just I stay home, and I make YouTube videos, and I, I try to write a book. And and uh, you get incremental success. Honestly, the funniest thing is that YouTube is so weird because it isn't like incremental at all. It's maybe slightly incremental, but really it's just like you throwing a bunch of shit at the, like a bunch of darts at the board. And then like eventually statistically one of them might hit like six months later, maybe. <laughs> yeah. It's sort it's of like weird. All, I've never, the most successful video I've ever had was act or like, um, from release to, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know how you, I describe it. The, uh, the best, like, upload window I guess I ever had was the video I did before my last one on Street Fighter V, uh, the Lupe Fiasco Daigo exhibition match. And that one hit, like, 3,000 views in, like, two or three days. And I was like, oh, shit. That's, like, pretty high. But for the most part, it's, like, uh, months after I post it, it'll get a random spike of a few hundred views or something like that. That's how the Konami one worked, right? It was just, like, okay. I mean, I posted that. I felt actually embarrassed when that video got big. Yeah, relatively big. I mean, that was my first... Uh, video that I've seen by you, and I th I thought it was a good video, so I don't know. Yeah, it I did, it's purely like a like an internal thing. Like I'm like, yeah, sh I'm sure people look at it and they don't mind, but I look at it uh, even at the time, and I was like, ah, I feel like I could have done this so much better. Not at the oh, time yeah. what that I put it out, but at the time that it started pulling in views, and I was like, oh, I feel like like the audio is bad and like the editing is really simple and i'm like ah, i feel like my recent stuff is so much better but uh people like it so i just kind of you know t i appreciate that <laughs> can't really do much about it so i don't i don't stress that much over it right um yeah like it's great man that's good to hear um you definitely deserve the support make a lot of thank you like I need to watch more of your stuff, but I've always been entertained <laughs> by your videos and stuff, and you work your ass you. off. Like, I wish I could, I had, like, the eighth of the discipline you have <laughs> with your shit, because I've literally That's... just been stuck writing, like, 
maybe a page <laughs> or two a day and it just like pisses me off like i always have to make my shit so grandose and all that but mm-hmm. um i definitely do deep dive memes like i said you know this video is probably gonna yeah. be like 45 minutes um which i'm probably gonna not do again for a while because mm-hmm. i need to make you know more stuff because like you said it's like the more you throw the darts it's like the more of a chance you'll yeah. get at one of the videos being a hit in my opinion which is an unfortunate kind of it's either unfortunate or like a blessing for people who do YouTube because I, I, I fucking hate it because I like taking my time a bit more. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay, you know, I gotta change up my memes and all that. Uh so Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I mean I yeah, I mean it's funny that you say discipline because I feel so lazy. What the fuck? You said you've been I, working nonstop for three days for the Yeah, past because few I days, procrastinated for like five days. <laughs> I get that. I've been procrastinating so, as well. God. My problem is, like, starting stuff, mainly. Same. That's yeah. just my problem, is I'm, like, just so fucking lazy. And I'm not happy when I'm lazy, too. Which is why I have to make two videos a month, at least. Or I have to have some kind of schedule that makes me... Forces me to do something on, like, a... You know, on a routine. Some kind of a... I need to be held to some kind of standard. Um, because, like... I... I dislike being bored more than I dislike being stressed, I guess. <laughs> like, I, I took a break last month. And, like, four days into the break, I was like, I'm kind of bored. Yep. I'm, I get that way, too. I want to like do something. And I ended up finding stuff to do. I kind of had to, like, force myself to take the break. <laughs> but it was, like, a very palpable feeling. So, like, when I... Uh, it's like I'll sit around for like a few days. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take a break because I just worked. It's like this cycle. It's like this dumb cycle I work myself into, where like I feel like all my videos are made in like four days. That's what it feels like. Mm. Uh, maybe not exactly if you count like like writing the script and everything, but or doing the research. And some stuff takes way longer, but like the overall process. But I feel like so many of my videos are like I sit down, I write this, I find a few sources about the topic until I feel like I have a good idea of it and then I write a script in one shot and then I start making and then I record the voiceover and then I start editing and all that takes place in like four days or five days I used to make a video a week (laughs) and I got so fucking burned out I got so burned out um but I did it for a while and it came at the uh I literally could not do anything else literally every single day was like i need to make i need to like get this done today i need to get this done today i need to get this done today so like it became a problem when i started dating because it's like i can literally only see you on weekends (laughs) with like my first girlfriend i'm like i can only see you on weekends because if i lose one day i'm not gonna hit my friday upload (laughs) that i've mandated for myself (laughs) Uh, and that basically resulted in me making, well, one, making a lot of videos that I actually really liked, uh, but two, running out of ideas and being really tired mentally all the time and, like, stressed out. Because <laughs> I would, like, I'd finish a video, and then the entire weekend I'd be thinking about what the next one was. Because I, I wouldn't know what the next one was going to be about. And it was super stressful. Uh, so in the start of this year, I was like, new schedule i'm gonna be slightly more lenient on myself because there's also like video ideas that were straight up just gonna take way too much time to research like the first thing i did when i came back was the Die Hard series which it took a week of like three three four five hours a day of just researching to get Mm, like 70% of that series done. Like the info for so much, most of that series. Like it was a fucking, it, there was an insane amount of information that I had to find and then like take notes on and digest and turn into like a five different scripts <laughs> eventually. Uh, and it, it literally took me like a week to read through most of what I needed to know. And there was more stuff on top of that that I had to do for later videos in that series. Um, And I was like, yeah, this definitely 
was I would never have been able to do this on one on like a weekly upload schedule so it paid off because I think those videos are good I think that series is good uh yeah, it's like weird. It's like finding it's like it's like a weird balance to like find the time. It's like giving a project the time that it needs to just get done in the first place, much less be like polished and also have some degree of regularity. <laughs> or you're just like George R. R. Martin. <laughs> yeah, man, that's <laughs> fucking crazy. Like it sounds like Yeah, I wish I had like even like I said, eighth of that discipline. Um, I really don't, uh, yeah. and I have plenty of time to do it. It's just, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's difficult. Um, yeah. It's like, if I sit down to do something, I'm gonna do it, but I just have to sit down. Yeah, I need to like, I might have like a very bad form of like, ultra, OCD, <laughs> ADD, ADHD, or something, because yeah. I need to like turn off my phone, throw it, um, maybe drink a little bit. And then just, like, get into the fucking mode. What's been helping me, you know, the weirdest thing. I've been trying to work on this video, and I'm just, like, so... Um, I kind of threw off my sleep pattern, too. Uh, which was bad of me, but it's what happened. So, Same. I've been, like, I've just been, like, sitting down, and I'm, like, really tense. And, like, I can't focus... I'm, like, wound up internally, you know, that that, like, that yeah, feeling? All, same all the time. Literally. And you're just like, I don't know, I just want to, like, take a walk, I want to do whatever. I want to just pace around. I get ca Yeah, 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 sorry, I keep interrupting, <laughs> you but, like, it's literally the yeah. same way. I get yeah. cabin fever, yeah. I walk through the house, and I'm, like, thinking about what to write, and then I write for, like, five minutes, and then I get up and then pace for another 30 minutes. It's fucking insane. Yeah. Like, or, or it's For me, it's not even that. It's, like, I literally just start thinking about something else. I got sidetracked so Same. easily. Yeah. So I just like randomly, I just was like, maybe I'm just like tense because my I didn't get enough sleep or I didn't get good sleep or whatever. Why don't I just like, like take some breaths? <laughs> so I just like, it's so simple, which is why it sounds dumb, but it's like, I literally just, I sat down in front of like Premiere and then I breathed in and out slowly for like 10 seconds and then i was just able to work i just right. like took a second to like breathe the tension out of my my body and uh i was just way more focused it might just be like a, i don't know like literally just like a heart rate thing i have a history of high blood pressure in my family Should so I like too? <laughs> maybe 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 that has to do with it but it's like Sometimes I just wake up and I'm just tense. Sometimes it happens. Have you ever had that? You just wake up and you're like tense, like your heart rate's kind of elevated for no real reason. And you don't uh, even realize it. I, maybe it's not so much a heart feeling as much as it's a feeling of like tingly, whatever, like all over my body. And I'm just like, ah, yeah. God, like I really, like I wake up at like 2 p.m. And I'm like, ah, God, <laughs> Jesus, fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really should like have an, not slept in, an, in. I yeah. Um, man, do you have a Twitter? I forgot. <laughs> I do. I opened one because I needed to have one. Yeah. <laughs> For this this line of work, and I check it a few times a day just to see if anyone messaged me. Something. I think I'm following you. Are you just like Tigan Moon? I think you are. Yeah, just Moon Tigan, which it picked automatically for me. Right. And I was like, that's weird. I thought you. I thought I would be able to pick that, but I guess not. Uh. Yeah. So I'm just. I'm Moon. I'm Moon Tigan. Uh. No one ever like messages me anything really, or like asks me on anything. Uh. But there was. I did have one really funny exchange where. <laughs> Someone added me, and they said, "Hey, uh, I've been showing my friends your Die Hard video, your Die Hard series. Um, uh, we were all like, we were wondering what your pronouns were." 
Oh my god, you've told me about that, I think. It's did did I? Yeah, that, that was so funny. Not in like, I don't mean to like put down that person. That's a, I just think it's so fun. Like, the mental image it conjured in my head of like a group of people, like, the, the way it was phrased was, it, it in my mind, I imagine like an argument started over it. Like, th th there's no way that's a guy. <laughs> there's no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I was like, uh, I, I don't really care about that stuff. Like, I don't care to, like, I don't know. <laughs> you need to call me by this. I, I don't, I don't care for my, in terms of myself. So whenever anyone asks me that, I just say it's gamer. Yeah, gamer. Gamer, which is now in my, my, I remember to add it in my bio. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> That's pretty fucking funny. Jesus yeah, Christ. that was a funny interaction. And then, like, after I... I, re I actually replied that to them. And then afterwards, like, all their furry friends followed me. <laughs> well, sick. That was <laughs> I pretty was like, cool. All right. I don't show my face very often. Um, I think you only get a little bit of yeah. my face. Yeah, just in, get that um, sultry voice. In, uh, on Instagram, that's about it. So, mm. I don't really use Instagram that much. Yeah, my face is yeah. only, like, once cool <laughs> yeah i didn't i had a uh there, th this this channel actually started as a as like a blog slash instagram account and then once i started making videos i just kind of abandoned the instagram account <laughs> yeah i was thinking one day of just closing all of my like other shit that's not just youtube but I, then i thought to myself like eh, maybe a twitter is necessary and maybe an instagram but that's about it um, and yeah, because yeah, I'm I'm gonna probably I'm gonna at you um, <laughs> when this video comes out and be like, hey, check out this video, you know, with your boy, and then myself, because yeah. I feel like I have like some fans, you know, that are probably wondering like, what the fuck is, is Prox dead? Because I haven't uploaded an actual project in like a year, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> which is why I streamed a few like a couple times and then. All that, but yeah, just to make it clear, guys. Yes, I'm alive and I'm making a project. I promise, um, and I want to be more consistent. I need to be. Um, yes. All right. I don't know if there's a. Uh, is there anything you wanted to ask? That um, okay. You know what? I have one more question. I wanted to oh, ask, like, what is the? Because you were talking about publishing a like a long time ago in this podcast. Oh, Jesus and Christ, yeah. My, uh... I was gonna talk... By the way, just real quick, I was gonna talk about comp titles. That's when I, why I brought up publishing. I'm gonna talk about comp titles. But what is... continue just, just for the viewers who were who get annoyed if I don't um, finish a thought. Comp titles? Hanging. So, like, composition? Comp titles. No, oh. comp titles, it's like a comparison title. So it's when you oh. have something like... Um, Oh, it's this meets this, and it's just for, like, publishers to know kind of, like, what, what your market is. Oh, I've never really thought of it like that. I don't... Yeah. This is what I was going to get into, but I hope oh, yeah, to sure. self-publish my books, which I know is big. Like, that's very difficult, and I'd need a big audience, but that's sort of, like, I sort of thought of that as, like, an end goal, because Max was kind of um, asking me that kind of a couple weeks ago like what is the end goal of your channel and i was kind of thinking well i want to be <laughs> or your end goal right and i was thinking yeah, well i want to be question. an esteemed artist with self-published works like whether it's art my art um my music my books videos films whatever like pretty i don't want to be like tied down to like one medium like films i want it to do a bit of everything which is kind of a problem on my part because I feel yeah. like kind of a jack of all <laughs> trades, master of none kind of dude when it comes to, you know, After Effects, Photoshop, editing, writing. Well, I feel like my writing is probably my most solid thing that I have. Like, I feel like my writing's pretty good. But, yeah. what What is your end goal with oh, your channel? Fuck. Uh... I want to have a good time. A same. That's a, yeah. I I've got no clue. <laughs> There's things that I would like to do. 
Um, I also want to meet this, people. Yeah, that's that's fun. Like my uh, uh, my yeah. not my heroes per se, but like I have some questions for like people who are like in the upper echelon of famous whatever that like they don't know of me, and I want to be known because of maybe they'll fucking notice me perhaps, and we can have a conversation. <laughs> And that's all yeah. I want. Like, I just want to have a conversation with some people who are very influential to me. And, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a weird a weird no, goal, I sense. guess. But I don't know. Uh, I guess, I, I don't know. I don't really, hmm. I don't want to entertain. Uh, it's probably always going to, I'm probably always going to be doing something creative in some way. I don't know what. It's also, like, really hard to... I was actually thinking about this last night. There's so little data on, like, what people, like, professional YouTubers do. Like, their career arcs. <laughs> Excuse me. Because there's so many people who just, like... Ugh, it's just... I was thinking about this in terms of, like, football. <laughs> so, like, I don't know much about football. So I asked my dad one time, who is more into sports, and I said, I asked him, like, okay, what what do, like, most people are, you know, football players, professional football players, they only play the game professionally for, like, a couple years. Like, most guys do not have that many years of professional sports in them. Like, maybe five or something. And if you're really good, maybe you can go on way longer. I'm like, what do they do after that? And, uh... Because obviously I know there's guys who go into, like, broadcasting and things. But I'm like, they can't be everyone. And he was like, uh, a lot of them just kind of go back into the workforce and they don't know what the fuck to do because they only know football. <laughs> they only know how to play football. That's pretty funny. I'm like, oh. Huh. What kind of sucks. Kind of sucks. Yeah. Plus brain damage. It's like brain that damage. Sucks. Yeah, no, it's like if you're like a middling NFL player, you're like the most fucked. Cause it's like you don't even have you can't even like get licensing deals because no one cares about you. And you got brain damage, now you gotta go to uh, I don't know, because the only thing you ever focused on was football for the first like twenty, twenty five years of your life. <laughs> um So like we don't have that kind of perspective, really, on, like, YouTubers, I guess. Because, I mean, YouTube's been around since 2005, so it's um, a little under 20 years old. But professional YouTubers, so to speak, have only existed since, like, what would you say, like, 2013, 2012, maybe? 2011-ish? Like, like, where it became, like, more than just, like, a random freak like one in a million thing and it's just still like one in a million thing but it's like more common as a platform uh like really like we don't have that great of an idea of what people do with a youtube career like do they just make are you just like you know james rolf and you just make avgn videos forever plus like random other stuff <laughs> or there's people who, like, they go into other ventures, like, a totally different channel or something like that. Uh, or something not YouTube-related at all. Uh, it's just, it's so, it's so weird. I have, like, no idea where I would even take this. I have, like, some idea, but I don't know. I don't have any particularly lofty aspirations i kind of just enjoy creating things and sharing things that make uh uh that kind of enrich people's lives a little bit there isn't really i don't have much of an end goal i just didn't en uh, enjoy it <laughs> yeah if that makes sense i sort of just gave like a little bit of a you know elevator pitch answer but yeah that, that sort of is part of it too for me like i definitely want to you know potentially like entertain you know and give sort of like a 
alternate like sort of escape for some people or like an experience for some people who couldn't have had that experience otherwise yeah, yeah. um you know and i have a um speaking of motifs i have an engineering background and a lot of my motifs have always been pretty like with my videos so far have been sort of and like visuals and sound design wise i guess it's more so obvious in canes but in the canes video but um sort of like an industrial type of aesthetic mm -hmm. and a sort of a grimy one because man i think the world's kind of a fucked place <laughs> but you know <laughs> if we really try hard enough and look close enough i feel like you know there's like diamonds in the rough and stuff and there's you know stuff out there to that can act as an escape you know to like to entertain or you know like mm -hmm. i said provide an experience anyway i'm kind of rambling <laughs> yeah i've gotten i've gotten some crazy comments from people who like had these really intense reactions to something that i made that i was not wow. expecting at all like uh you made me want to um i don't know punch my wife <laughs> <laughs> it was like that no i'm, I'm just joking no um <laughs> I, <laughs> um no um like I, i've gotten like i got a comment from someone at the end of my the Die Hard series that was like this guy just like pouring his heart out oh. about how um those like magazines really meant a lot to him and like when he was how when he was like a kid they like really it really helped him to like feel kind of validated and not like a freak for liking video games or having like a, an emotional resonance with video games <clears throat> and how like my videos gave him this weird kind of like closure on this part of his life and i was like holy shit i just thought it was funny <laughs> yeah. i just thought this was like a funny story and there was this completely um unintentional yeah not quite yeah like unintentional um reaction that that got i was like that's so cool like in a way I kind of made that guy's life like a little better <laughs> you know maybe not like a ton but like it did something for him and i think that's crazy i think that's so crazy um i guess i don't know if i could just do that for my whole life i'd be cool with that <laughs> yeah like yeah pretty much the same like you know have it like provide you know entertainment escape experience yeah there you go because i think mm -hmm. that's sort of what i because i remember being asked like by glink and his friends like when i was doing like stuff for him for the light wave event that happened you probably haven't heard of it is a kind of a no. a thing um mudahar is going to talk about it soon going to be a part of that anyway um about like you know meaning a life and all this life philosophy and i was just like i don't know life is kind of to learn and to experience for me i yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm not very religious no i mean uh, me neither but uh yeah you know Sometimes we've been I going for about, about the balls what yeah <laughs> <laughs> no nah, i'm joking anyway what are you saying <laughs> Been going for about <coughs> two hours and fifty minutes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I've, I've like dragged this on. My bad. <laughs> oh, no problem, no problem. Uh, just for the sake of my throat, and because I do want to get back to work. <laughs> um, and I'm sure you would like to get back to work, right? I don't work right? on weekends, but I will. Oh. I will think about. I will think about <laughs> Enter the Matrix constantly. <laughs> Be there, work in spirit. Yes. Um, we're gonna. I'd like to draw this, draw this to a close. Uh, is there anything? Is there anything you'd like to plug? First of all. Uh, yeah. So like I said, you know, name's Prox, and my channel is Prox is Frisky, you know, and I got mm -hmm. Twitter instagram yeah. all that stuff I'll link your, um i'll link your stuff 
I might have some, you know, I have only like two big videos, but maybe you'll like them, who knows, or, yeah, <laughs> but other than that, no, not really, not really much to plug, uh, it's been All right. a pleasure being on your podcast, brother, um, thank you. Of course, Pev, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, I have something, uh, the Mega, the, the, the finale to the Mega Man comic is going to be either today or tomorrow i don't know exactly when it'll be out very very soon uh maybe by the time you guys are listening to this so keep on the lookout for that uh other than that things are business as usual uh yeah it's pretty much oh i might actually miss an upload on this podcast next week um, or technically the week after that. I'm not sure because I am going to basically be out of the house for a full week. Maybe I'll pre-record something. I don't know. But I'm going, uh, I've got two things that are forcing me out of the house back to back for multiple days. Um, I'll talk about it. I'll talk a little bit about it when I'm back. But, uh, yeah, if there's no episode like two episodes from now, or, or maybe, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to play out. Uh, that's what's going on, guys. So, uh, other than that, thank you for listening to Prox and I for this long. Uh, if you have a question for me uh, that you'd like me to answer next time, leave it in the comments below, and I will definitely get to it. But please leave it in the form of a question, because I don't want to read your thoughts out loud. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. It's just, I can't, it has to be a question. I can't. Right. Just, yeah, just, I'm sorry. I don't want to just thought... read off every comment. <laughs> Right, yeah. I was just thinking of, like, we could just pre-record arguing about Bleach and talking about dick and balls for the next We probably week. could. Anyway, we probably yeah. could. Um, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Uh, la-di-da-di-da. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>